Hello and welcome to another Oxford Math live stream. I'm James Monroe. I'm the admissions coordinator for Maths at Oxford, and I can just about remember how to do a YouTube live stream. How are you doing, chat? It's been a little while. Um, well, we've got a poll for that sort of thing, haven't we? Um, we've got a poll for you to tell me how you're doing, uh, which we always do at the start of the episode. I really genuinely can't can't tell which buttons on YouTube to press. YouTube behind the scenes. If, if anyone from YouTube is watching, why do you keep moving all the buttons around? Why do you why do you keep changing all the symbols and all the buttons? I'm I'm getting a bit older, YouTube. I, I need the familiarity of everything being in the, the same places. Um let's put chat on screen. Uh oh no, that's not what <laughs> that's on me. The YouTube person, that's that's on me. Um, <laughs> in order to put chat on screen, I will need chat on my screen. I think this is the loudest. Oh, uh, microphone volume, microphone volume, microphone volume. Uh, I know it's not very professional to do this on the broadcast. Oh, that is as loud as my microphone goes. Quite quiet, and my mouse clicks are really loud. Am I on the correct microphone? Yes. So much harder to use than Twitch. Um, if you're wondering in chat, uh, let's try and, try and get a chat on the screen. So, if you're joining for the first time, this is what is this? This is supposed to be a live stream where we talk about um, math admissions test questions from Oxford. Um, and I am trying to get chat to work. Oh, there we go. That'll, that'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Will this work if I put this here? Yes. Chat's working. Technology, eh? There's a message in there which says, stressful few weeks, James. Yeah, been a bit of a thing, hasn't it? Uh, after the Asher. Ah, oh, it's nice recognizing names, isn't it? Uh, I always like to do a poll for how was your day? Hmm, it says today as well, but I reckon I'm going to get votes on, yeah, I reckon I'm gonna get votes not about today, aren't I? I reckon it's an all time low for voting. Nobody's gone for two stars, what's going on there? <laughs> I guess if you're thinking about voting two stars, it's just so tempting to go one star. Or oh, is chat coordinating to try and get the graph to give me the finger? You've kind of missed a little bit, chat. I've always known this is a possibility that if if it's about equal except for one of the options, then you can do a kind of no, you got you got you got that wrong. Um, <laughs> shouldn't encourage chat. <laughs> I've thought of new and inventive ways for you to troll me. Um, which maybe I shouldn't share with you. It's, somebody says it's their first time watching live. Welcome to the show, welcome live. Um, it's live, anything could happen. Um, people in chat are asking about the additional map test, which I think, just to be clear, I wanna, I wanna catch you up on what's happened over the last few weeks. Um, since, cast your mind back, not the person who's watching for the first time, but I think they said watching live for the first time. Anyway, cast your mind back. Um, we were here gathered together talking about Math 22 uh, and we said, you've got this, it's maths. Um, and then we sent you off into the mat. Uh, and for some people, the mat went absolutely fine. Um, and for some people, the mat was an absolute disaster and not because of the questions. Um, for some people, there were massive technical issues that stopped them from seeing the questions or stopped them from changing between questions or stopped them from doing anything on a computer. Um, and that disruption was quite widespread and meant that lots of people had absolutely awful time. Since then, Oxford have announced that for candidates affected by that technical disruption, there's an additional test. Um, it's in a couple of weeks time and we're sending emails out to uh, Oxford candidates Warwick and Imperial are doing something similar. Um, there's an additional test, um, not a full map paper, but there's a, a sort of short extra test. Um, you might have heard about it. 
maybe on the Oxford, Oxford website uh, or on the Matt's website, uh, which is linked to from here, uh, or you might have heard about it via just emailing test centers and people. Gosh, if you haven't heard about this, then I guess I'm doing it now. Um, Oxford's doing this extra thing um, if you're affected by the disruption. Um, there is one person in chat, I should say, who I'm just, I'm just going to try and link to the official statement thing. Um, uh, I would hope that, who have we emailed about this? Who have we emailed? So we emailed Oxford candidates, we emailed Oxford candidates, we've emailed test centres, and for the actual invite that's going out, um, hopefully tomorrow, almost certainly tomorrow, um, we're doing a bit of a bigger push. So I suppose if you're an Imperial or Warwick candidate, then you might not have heard yet. Does this kind of make sense? You might not have heard yet. Um, so you might hear tomorrow for the big push with what the option, what the what the what the plan is. I guess Oxford candidates got maybe one more email than Warwick candidates. I don't really know. It's been a bit of a haze for the last two weeks. Um, the plan is that um, yes, other universities will see uh, additional math scores. Um, and the plan is that it's not a disadvantage, that it's not a trap. Um, that if you're offered, if you're offered a, an extra chance to do some maths questions because of the disruption to your orig the original test, um, we're encouraging people to take that option. Um, I've heard in chat that Warwick um, are doing something straightforward, like looking at your best score. Talk to Warwick. Um, I don't know what Imperial are doing. Um, Oxford are doing something very complicated. I've been added in chat for saying it's complicated, but also we're doing something very complicated where we look at lots of data and we are actually still working out precisely how much data we've got. People have voted for about four, which is pretty good. Pretty good up there. Um, you know, we, we've had better, we've had worse. 3.4 is the average because all those one, two, threes, I'm always looking out for that. I don't like the way sometimes the chart normalizes and everything moves at once. Yeah, look, I guess that's someone voting or not voting for the map. It's scaling it to the maximum. So like four bars move? Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, quick look at chat. Um, you don't have to do the special consideration form if your school already did it for you. Um, should have said that. We've got loads of duplicate forms and we've got a team looking through all the forms very carefully. Um, but uh, should be should be okay if you have one form uh, that lets us know that you're affected by the technical disruptions. Uh, yeah, and the plan is to get it out to other universities. What have I missed? Uh, not going to be in college. Um, we're also arranging it by... So S is the person in chat who's just found, finding out about additional Matt um, live. Um, S, I hope you get an email tomorrow um, if you're affected by disruption and did the special considerations form. Um, I hope you get an email with more information tomorrow. We're also doing some people's additional Matt by remote invigilation with them at home. Uh, so they have sent a form. Well, I'm sorry, tomorrow, but I get an extra Matt invite. Uh, you might get an email saying we think you haven't done the thing. Um, please, the email is probably going to say something like contact us urgently if you think you should have been invited to the thing. Um, for Oxford candidates where I've got everyone's email addresses, um, we're doing a careful two email system so we can make sure we contact everyone. I'm doing my best to keep Imperial and Warwick candidates in the loop. Right. Uh, taking all they get in for consideration. Thank you uh, for the quote from Imperial. Duplicates is fine. Look, <laughs> promise to Tong in chat. If they're duplicates, would it be fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are being now. We're always very careful with people's information and treating people's applications very carefully. We are treating people's applications very, very carefully at this point. Right. Okay. Percentage. Uh, I have different estimates depending on what you mean by disruption and part of it is I think I'm not ready to comment sorry there was an estimate in the first Oxford email but yeah. uh, I delayed Matt to the 24-25 admissions application cycle says anonymous have I got lucky I'd say that 23 was a year that in hindsight you did not want to be doing Matt I think other people in chat will back up the other fun thing that happened was on the same day as Matt, Warwick sent out loads of offers. So lots of people were upset about the map, but then also sort of happy that Warwick had made them an offer. And I've just seen in chat that Kate, somebody, somebody's got an Imperial offer as well. So congratulations on the Imperial offer. 
Um, for K in chat, and I'll say this once more here, um, if you do the optional test and do worse, it's not supposed to disadvantage you. Um, I think I don't think that's going to happen very much, by the way, that if you're affected by disruption in the first test, that means that you did worse than your sort of true potential. And in the new test, if you're not affected by disruption, it should be a better measure. So the score should just be higher. I know not everyone's going to score higher, and also one of the, the, the different tests, right? <laughs> so I, 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 yeah, you're not supposed to be disadvantaged if the new one doesn't go as well as the previous one. But I think that's going to be quite unusual because of the amount of disruption people have. Like we, we have people who we have people who couldn't do anything on the test day because they couldn't access the questions. For them, it's just not a question, right? It's not going to go worse. Um, good. Uh, I'm also not talking about marks today. This is going to annoy people, right? This is how to tank your viewership, by the way. You just tell people what you're not going to do. Um, we're going to park this, but we're going to park this in a second. But uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about the detailed mark breakdown. This year, you've actually got the mark breakdown for the parts um, because we printed it on the questions. Um, I don't really want to get too much into the details of that. I think it will just stress people out if we start, if I start trying to mark people's work in chat. That's just not what I'm for, um, not what I'm about today. Um, I do want to go on the maths questions on the mat. Some of them, some of them have been you know, secret for ages. Um, I've been excited to talk about them, and then the party atmosphere has been ruined somewhat by, well, a it's an exam, so what party spirit, and b everything. Um, Wait, wait, wait. And then someone else says, if I do very well, if I do very well on, on an additional mat, um, if you do very well on the additional mat, I would say, personally, I'd see that as very encouraging indeed as an admissions tutor. Um, I, if the story is, there was loads of disruption, I didn't get very many marks because I couldn't see the damn questions. And then on an occasion where I could see the questions, I got all of them right. Um, I think that tells quite a, quite a convincing story in, in a way to an admissions tutor. No, Mission students, humans make decisions based on all the information, but if if the if the only thing holding you back is the ability to see the questions, then oh. <laughs> good, right, okay. Uh, I included question J to sort of win a bet, not a bet really, but to prove a point. Um, right, good. This is the most mature and sensible way to set questions. How do you want to do this, chat? Do you want to go through it in order? Or do you want to do um, particular particular questions? You could do a poll if you like. Are people going to suggest particular ones? Apparently my audio is really weird. Um, I'm in quite an echoey room, but I'm always in this room. And I think my I think my audio setup's the same as it used to be. The volume bars are for me kind of in the same places. Uh, Miles likes J, other people likes J. <laughs> Should do J first. I'm going to wrap up the disruption chat first. I'm just to trying to close this off. And if you see other people joining in chat, I'm going to try not to get too distracted. But um, the steps of this, if you experience disruption, please let Oxford know. Um, there's a special considerations form. Uh, if you see other people joining and asking about it, maybe link them to the special considerations form. Um, I'm going to do my best as well. Um, once you've done the special considerations form, uh, Oxford's processing data and will invite people to an additional map if they experienced tech disruption. Right, okay. Uh, ran out of time for J and guest. Uh, some votes for some votes for polling. How about I do J and then we talk about <laughs> tell a story. You want story time? There's story time again. I'll do J and I'll switch on a poll. There you go. Um, everyone's happy. Well, maybe no one's happy. I don't know. So I got all the options in this. This is a poll where I removed option. Wait, 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 I removed question two. I can't remember why I removed question two. But I did remove question two. Oh, and I included question seven. Don't vote for question seven. But obviously, everyone's already question seven already. Okay, brilliant. Once again, coming up with new and exciting ways to draw me. <laughs> why do I do this? Uh, question four is missing as well. Totally balanced poll. This is why I don't like removing options. Each week, if I don't remove the options, people will vote for them after we've talked about them to troll me. If I do remove the options, then I forget to put them back. Uh, okay, okay, but we're gonna talk about J at the same time. Which has got a tiny bit of a story. Um, 
Cool, and I'm going to try and line this up so that you can see the voting live, which encourages you to vote. If it's your first time joining in live, um, you can vote over at slido.com slash M-A-T-L-I-V-E, that's slido.com slash Matt Live. Um, or if you visit the website, there's a, a link to that page. That website's also got other fun stuff on it. I said that without any conviction. It was really, really unconvincing. Um, okay, so this is one of those scary questions that's not actually as scary as it looks. Not hard, right? It looks very scary. Um, so we've got this notation about um, X, uh, which I've met before, and it's actually called floor of X, uh, or sometimes just floor X, it's the floor function. It doesn't really look like a function when it's written like that, but never mind. Um, and the idea behind this question is that three quarters is being raised to different powers um, for different values of x. But those powers are integer powers. So this is sometimes three quarters to the zero or three quarters to the one, or actually negative numbers are allowed as well. Um, and in fact, in this range between x is zero and x is two, uh, between x is zero and x is two, log base two of x is negative. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> Let's try and be truthful. It's less than one. Do I mean less than one? Yeah, I do mean less than one. And then, then it's going to get rounded down to zero. Um, it's less than one. And it can go very, very negative indeed. Uh, and this floor thing is going to round this down. So because this is less than one, um, the biggest that this value can actually be uh, is zero. So maybe this could be written as like four thirds to the power of negative floor of log base two of x, but this isn't really getting us anywhere yet. We've got to we've got to engage with what values this function actually takes. Uh, and there's an example that f of one half. One half in here is minus one. Um, minus one rounds down, I suppose, to minus one. So that gives four thirds. Okay. So the key thing I think is to work out when is when is log base two x a negative integer, a whole number, right? Integer is another word for whole numbers here. Um, and that happens at, I suppose, two to the minus one, two to the zero, uh, two to the minus two, two to the minus three, two to the minus four. These, these, these sort of numbers, maybe not two to the zero. That's not a negative, is it? Um, so there's kind of special values when x is one half or one quarter, one half or one quarter, or one eighth or one sixteenth. Those are sort of the points where the value of the function is, well, if this is one half, then we've just been told it's four thirds. At one quarter, the value is four thirds squared, and then four thirds cubed, and then four thirds to the four. So that's making me think geometric progression, um, common ratio. Um, now, what do we actually ask for? We're asking the area, which means we need to think about the width between these things. Um, we need, well, so the, the area, we need to think about the value of the function in between these points, um, the height of the function, and what it looks like. Um, because of the rounding in this floor function thing, um, in between, it's sort of straight line. Um, you get different values of x, you get different values of log, but it gets rounded down to the, the same largest whole number. Okay, I'm going quite fast. Um, uh, ah, Real Fermat is doing great work in chat. Thank you, Real Fermat. Yes, people in chat are helping each other, which is very good because I need to do two things at once. Um, maybe, maybe, a, maybe that's an exaggeration. Maybe I'm doing one thing. Um, okay, okay. So between two and one, between two and one, log base two of x is somewhere between oh my goodness, somewhere between naught and one. So I guess this is. Uh, all, all has value one in that region. So I've got a kind of area here between one and two where the function has value one. And then there's some value between one half and one. I'm thinking about these values now. Between one half and one, where the value of the function is four thirds, a little bit taller. Um, and then there's some region between one quarter and one half where the value of the function is four thirds squared, uh, and so on. <laughs> and it's the and so on that gives us this kind of geometric series. The area is rectangles. Uh, the area is made of rectangles, which means what we want for our kind of final sum down here, one for that square between two and one with height one. And then uh, what's this next one? It's got width one half and it's got height four thirds. 
and then the next one's got width one quarter and it's got height four thirds squared and so on and so on and so on and that's a geometric series with uh, first time one common ratio two thirds so i think it's three for the sum and kind of geometric sum from right to left getting very spiky over there uh, the votes are in um, i'm going to take a quick screenshot of the votes that's how i do that i don't like at all Ah, oh, my goodness. Professional live streamer. That's how this works. Let's have a quick look at audience chat. I need to switch that off, don't I? There we go. So I've got my, got my poll, got the thing. Good, we're doing great. Um, why does the log have to be negative? Um, huh, good question. I guess it doesn't. So I know in between, x is between 0 and 2. So I guess I'm thinking that the log... The log might be a little bit, I suppose it might be a little bit positive, yeah. In all of this region here, the logarithm is a little bit positive. Yeah, no, point taken. Log doesn't need to be um, negative. Um, your internet cut out while I did something stupid, and then you came back in in time to get a fresh pair of eyes on it and realise I was being daft. Solution document tends to go on the website at the end of the emissions round. Um, uh, I used to... Uh, a couple of years ago, I used to kind of drip feed it during the admissions round, but I think it was just annoying people. Um, it's just kind of stressful to constantly get updates on the Matt website. I'm just going to do it all at the end. Um, I'm scared that some people who have no disruption will submit fake special consideration forms to get another shot at Matt. It's something I've thought of. Um, we have we are looking at other data. I don't want to say anything very precise. But we are looking at other data. Yeah. Um, Shift Windows S. Yeah, that's what I did. That does a screenshot, but then I don't know how to look at it. <laughs> what do you press after? Shift Windows S. Oh, yeah, that's what I did. I do that. I do that, and it does a screenshot, which you can't see on the screen for some reason. But then I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> is it supposed to open a box for me with the screenshot in it? You didn't come to learn about screenshots. You can you can see question five. In your solutions video, is it now a tradition for you to make a mistake? Lol. Yeah, yeah, it is. The tradition is I'm a big dum dum. It's a very sad tradition for me. Oh god, I make an error every year now. I think it might be three in a row. This one was my least problematic error, I think. Windows notifications. Ah, I have got... Oh, my Windows notifications are somewhere underneath all of this. <laughs> Thank you, though. Oh, the bet didn't do the story. Not quite a bet. Um, when you first learn about integration, for real at university, it's all about adding together rectangles. And to make sure that things work, the lecturer says something like, if there are finitely many rectangles, then we can add their areas together. I'm paraphrasing quite a bit, but the, the, the first time you learn about integration with areas with rectangles, uh, they say, if there's finitely many. And they restrict to just talking about finitely many rectangles. That's the sort of functions we're going to talk about. Uh, you approximate them with finitely many rectangles, and you, you're good. Um, and I'm a bit contrary, so I wanted to imagine infinitely many rectangles. Um, so this function is built so that it's infinitely many rectangles, and yet you can add them all together. Uh, it's quite hard to make that into a math question because it's quite hard to make that into a math question because adding together infinitely many things, there's only one sort of that that you know about. Maybe that's a clue for future map questions. A bit like now, isn't it? But future map questions, if you're asked to add together infinitely many things, it's probably a geometric sum. No, I, I, don't, I don't love it. Don't love it. Um, right, okay. Uh, did I write any of the longer questions? Uh, I had a hand in some of them. It's team effort uh, these days. So it wouldn't be fair for me to say that they were my questions. Any of them. Big problem understanding question five. Yes. What happens if you don't understand the question at all? 
um, you tend to still make some progress with it. Let's have a look at question five now. I'm not going to tell you how many marks you've got. That would be mean and weird. Um, but I do want to look at the question. Verb uh, summed it up as it's always a geometric sum. <laughs> Let's look at this question and see if it's a geometric sum. It's not. Or is it? Huh, no, I don't know. Um, people asking about interviews. <laughs> people asking about next year. That is, that is a good question. That question gets a small star. That is, yeah. Yeah, that is a good question. I need to make it to the end of this year first. Right, okay. Um, right, question five. Define the sequence, Fn, as follows. F1, F2, and then add them together. Um, which maybe makes you think, I reckon I've seen this before. Um, and in fact, if you've watched all the Matt live streams, you have seen this sequence before. And if you haven't watched all the Matt live streams, you've maybe seen this sequence before anyway, because it's a reasonably famous sequence. Uh, but even if you haven't seen it before, you can add together uh, one plus one is two. Welcome to your actual map paper. Uh, two plus one is three. Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Three plus two is five. <laughs> really lost the plot there. Um, that's right. Every time I've told you that one plus one is two, that's been a... No, not really. <laughs> okay. Can't even do that joke because people will take it seriously. Every time I've told you one plus one is two, that's been a useful fact that you will need for maths. No. No, that's a, that's people will take that too seriously. Uh, yeah, BMAT, the medics are way ahead of us. They're just like in the crazy future now. Um, people want to know how hard the test is going to be, and I don't think I'm allowed to say. Um, okay, so how many additions do you need in order to get up to F FN? Well, I needed three additions to get up to F5, and it's pretty clearly going to be another one. Oh, I just keep going, keep going, and it's kind of about N. Um, and you can finesse that a little bit. It's probably not exactly n, but um, I think precisely it's like n minus two. But um, I think I'm happy for this. Uh, good. Uh, what happens if you make question three? If you made a substitution and differentiated, uh, I, I don't want to comment on marking policy. The question says not to differentiate. Right? We'll, we'll have a look at that one in a second. More than a second. Um, okay, so quite sort of question I really like about bijection. Uh, we don't know the word bijection, but that's that's this word for when uh, two things turn out to be the same thing or, or to have the same size. Um, so here we've got a new construct. It's sequences of zeros and ones. Brill, I know about sequences of zeros and ones, um, but there's a twist. You can't have two consecutive ones. That breaks symmetry, by the way. Anyway. Uh, I guess, is somebody in chat now going to tell me that they don't know what consecutive means? I mean, I suppose there are examples and it's maybe not enough to work out that they, that's what consecutive means. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, okay, okay. Let SN denote the number of val valid sequences. Oh, uh, an anonymous in chat. After interviews, um, we look at all the data for Oxford. For Oxford decisions, we look at all the data, not just interviews. Um, we have loads of data. Herb picking me up on a new innovation in ways to troll me. Well done, Herb. Um, as I say, I do keep I do keep giving you new and interesting ways to uh, uh, make me look stupid. He says, failing to work out how many sequences of sequences of length one that are either zeros or ones. But wait, there's a twist. You cannot have consecutive ones. Um, I don't. Um, S2, um, I guess for S2 it's sequences that are like 0, 0, or 0, 1, or 1, 0, or 1, 1. Oh, wait, no, that was banned. 3. Good, okay. Um, and I guess S0 is kind of 1, but that's not really in the question. S minus 1 is like really not a thing. Um, but these are going to turn out to be the Fibonacci numbers as well. Uh, people really want to know about shortlisting. Uh, shortlisting is done by colleges. Um, it is not something the department, the department, which, where have I got the department? Hello, this is the department. Um, the department and the university can't just 
announce that extra people are being shortlisted. It's something the colleges are talking about. Don't email your college, they're working it out. Um, probably they want to actually just do their shortlisting and see what happens. Um, good. Um, each little addition, all of the little additions. Oh, we'll get there. I think it's going to be all right. All the little additions. Oh, including these ones? Are these ones? In order to know what five is, when you see the five, you have to know that five is one plus one plus one plus one plus one? No, that's not what you mean, is it? Oh, anyway. How many marks are there for the county county parts? Like three total marks for the county county parts? Right here. And I imagine that the marking is going to be quite generous given about how well just just as generally at everything. Um, okay. Uh, right, okay, classic kind of question five stuff. Um, by considering first element of the sequence, show that SN does the same equations. Where we've got an equation in mind up here. Uh, some one has scribbled all over it, which is not helpful. Let's tidy this up a little bit by deleting all the stupid things I've written. Um, so I suppose the first element is 0 or 1 in the first element. Uh, that gives you two cases, because then you've, you've set out what the 0 is and you've got to think about what's next, or you've put a 1 here and you've got to think about what's next. And in the first case, who knows? But in the second case, you do know something. You know that this is going to start with a 0, because you can't have two consecutive 1s. Uh, oh, you mean the last bit? You mean the last bit? Yeah, well, the last bit's only two marks, and we'll get there in a second. Um, okay, okay, and these don't have to be different. Well, this is a sequence of length n minus 1, that's a sequence of length n minus 2. Um, that's going to show you that uh, the sequence lines up. It does the same rule. I suppose the actual thing we're showing here is that Sn is Fn plus 2, um, and that's because the numbers don't quite match up. Um, at the F sequence starts 1, 1, and the S sequence starts 2, 3, uh, which is further along in the Fibonacci numbers. Um, so S of S1 is the same thing as F3, S2 is the same thing as F4, but then it carries on with the same rule to generate the next one of each sequence. Um, uh, I think because the question says this, probably people spotted that they were th the thing they were supposed to conclude was not just that uh, not just that Sn is equal to Fn. The the starting numbers are kind of misaligned, but I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe it makes the question easier, but maybe the question could have said 2 and 3 up here. If the question says 2 and 3 up here, then it's, I mean, the adding is slightly harder. But then down here it would be Sn equal Fn. I don't know. It's something to think about with sequences, isn't it? People think these bits were cool. Well, one person thinks these bits are cool. Engineering skills. I mean, the multiple choice, you're fine. Um, I think you get the marks for you get the marks for being getting the right answer. Um, tutors might look at your working out, but that doesn't affect your actual score. Um, Oxford tutors might look at your working out. I now have to say everything three times, right? Oxford Imperial Warwick, and I don't know about Imperial and Warwick, so it's very tricky. Um, right, these parts of the questions are continuing. Um, if you look at the n minus one position, and this took me quite a while to think about because for the n minus one position, there are n minus two things here. And then there's this thing, and then there are, oh gosh, it's length 2n minus 3, which I think means there are n minus 2 things on the right as well. n minus 2 things? Or is it n minus 1 thing? Oh, I've really thrown myself now. Yeah, I'm going to get something that's out by 1, aren't I? Oh no, but these are f's, not s's. That's where I'm going to get out by, out by 2. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder if it's worth it, right? Um, there are possibilities. You can decide what you want on the left. You can decide what you want on the right. Um, uh, and, and those are kind of separate choices. If the thing in the middle is a zero, then everything's fine. If the thing in the middle is a one, uh, then you've got to put a zero around it. And then you can do anything you like on the other side. 
uh, always make sure your ones are not next to other ones. Um, if you don't do the same solution as the mark scheme, but it is valid, yes, that should be awarded marks. And the markers are instructed to look out for extra uh, for other methods, and it's the thing they like finding the most, I think. Um, I don't see why I would have to do it for PPE. I hope they make it for PPE. Who's done it for PPE? Where's making you do map for PPE? Uh, for, map 20, for map B, the second one, it's going to be multiple choice. So it's going to be a bit like question one. Good, okay. This is a good marking policy, vaguely, but not too specific. If we get too specific, I worry that I'm stressing people out. Don't want to stress people out. We should be chill. We should be chill. Um, okay, okay. These two possibilities correspond to whether it's a one in the middle or a zero in the middle. It's a little bit awkward, I suppose, that we've got this SN thing I want to talk about here, that like S2N minus 3 is equal to S2N minus 2 squared plus S2N minus 3 squared. And then I've got to kind of correct the out by 2 kind of thing to get turn those into Fs, but whatever. Um, and this one falls apart in the same manner, by the way. So we can think about sequences of length 2n minus 2, 2n minus 2, and look at the n minus 1th item again. Um, which is pretty nice. What am I talking about? Part 5. Oh, I'm talking about imagining uh, sequences. So we've got this link by part four. We've got S's and F's. The F's are just sort of some benign sequence that goes one, one, and then adds. Whereas the S's are interesting. They refer to these um, valid sequences. Um, so I'm told to think about sequences of length 2n minus 3 for some n. So I'm imagining a massive sequence. And the n minus 1th position is the thing in the middle, like right in the middle. I'm imagining, is it a 0 or a 1? So there's some huge sequence like, uh, oh, hang on, here are some sequences of length 2n minus 3, these ones. Um, the number in the middle might be a 1 or it might be a 0. Um, if it's a 1, it's got to be surrounded by zeros. Uh, if it's a 0, then anything goes. It could be 1s or zeros on the inside. The things on the left and the right still have to be valid sequences, but you could put 1 here or 0 here. Um, whereas if you put a 1 in the middle, then uh-oh, you better put zeros around that. And now you can carry on. You can put any valid sequence in the leftover bits. In this example up here, the valid sequences are pretty short. Um, but, I mean, there we go. Uh, in a way, this is saying that S5 is either you have a zero in the middle and you do a valid two sequence on the left and a valid two sequence on the right. You can choose separate ones on the left and the right to make sure they're valid. Um, or you could put a one in the middle, in which case you've got to pad it with zeros, uh, and then choose your favourite one sequences to put on the left and the right make separate ones. Solve five in detail. Okay, I think I'm kind of doing that at the moment. Why is n minus one in the middle? Uh, write the length, let's do it again. Let's go, let's go. Okay, so part five. Uh, n minus one position is the middle. Middle. Uh, there are n minus two on the left and 2n minus 3 minus n minus 1 equals n minus 2 on the right. Either that's a 1 or a 0 in the middle. Um, and if you're feeling complete, completionist, you say, and these are mutually exclusive cases, we should add together the number in each of our mutually ex exclusive cases. But otherwise, we just keep going. If one, then we have zero in the n minus tooth position and the nth position. Then any choice of valid sequence in the n minus in the first. Oh gosh, the first n minus, goodness me, n minus three digits and separately and independently, I can't write all this, um, in the final n minus three digits. Right, those are independent choices within the same case. So we multiply the number together, the number of each together in this case. We need to add on the case where if zero in the middle, but it's pretty similar. I'm not going to write anything out again. My handwriting's already terrible. Um, 
Matt Harry Potter. Oh, I normally get Matt Spider-Man, so I'll take Matt Harry Potter. I think that's an upgrade. Ooh, sorry, Spider-Man. That's sort of quite a diss, isn't it? Um, Lincoln's a nice college. I answered two questions at once. Um, okay. Like a lot of these things, you've got kind of a choice. You've got a binary choice, um, and then you live with the consequences in each, each of those cases, and you enumerate how many things are there in each case. Um, like, uh, I've got a huge bag of uh, socks and shoes, um, and uh, I want to count them. I can count the socks and the shoes separately. That's all right. Uh, I'll count the socks first and then the shoes and add them up. And for the socks, I've noticed that um, there's this kind of nice combinatorial problem that for every left shot, there's a right sock. And so I can do this kind of like two and then think about a sock strategy, count those and double it. Ooh, the factor of two. Um, whereas for the shoes, I've noticed that, ah, right, do it separately, right? And there might be some multiplication within the cases, but then some addition in between. Socks and shoes, maybe not a great example because they're both obviously even. I'll come up with a better example for you one day. Uh, hey, if you've seen me on Reddit, I have had to make some changes to my Reddit. I cannot comment. Um, uh, good. I'm also Sam. Sam, I'm not a chorus. Not saying how difficult the additional matter is going to be. And uh, as kind of general advice, in case people are watching this in the future, um, you should never ask me how the difficult the mat is. Um, I, I'm always a bit wrong about what, how hard questions are. Um, my opinion is like almost worthless to you. Overall, it is supposed to work out. Uh, should we do the VI one? Yeah, the VI one's a little bit harder. Um, good. Marking is very standardized. Um, there is a official mark scheme. There are detailed mark schemes developed during uh, if something comes up. Markets are extremely coordinated, and they're all maths or computer science or related uh, grad students. Ah, two things about Reddit at the same time. Um, I regret posting on reddit ever and i regret making a reddit account <laughs> it's also man um we'll do vi in 10 seconds i want to go on reddit for fun but now reddit's just promoting me stressful things about my job i hate seeing my job on unrelated social media i want to just scroll but no can't escape work here um yeah I think all I need to do is accidentally get uh, Matt updates to somehow come at me during episodes of Bake Off, and I, I will have probably ruined uh, anything <laughs> fun in the in the world. Uh, good, right? Uh, uh, yeah, people are telling me to get off Reddit. Good. Um, Twitch. Chill maths. I've been streaming on Sundays. Uh, right, I said I'd do VI. We've got another expression. Uh, my plan is basically the same. Uh, can I talk about it in terms of S's? Um, I don't really want to write so much stuff. My, my graphics tablet is not great at doing that kind of writing. I don't particularly want to do the typing either. But um, here I want to highlight what's different. Um, so this has N things on the left. So I'm considering, I'm now considering, sorry, first sentence. Consider sequence, sequence of length 2n minus 2. Um, why am I doing 2n minus 2? Well, I remember that sn is kind of out from the fn's by 2. Over here, we looked at uh, length 2n minus 3, and we ended up talking about f 2n minus 1. Two more. Um, now, if I want to end up at F2n, I think mm, maybe those sequences of length 2n minus 2 might be the right ones. Just an idea. Um, n things on the left of the n minus 1 position, and it has, oh gosh, uh, 2n minus 2 minus n minus 1 things on the right, which is n <sighs> minus 2 minus minus 1. That's how they get you. n minus 1 things on the right. 
Now, there are two cases. Um, either you put a one there, one there, and you get some number of choices, or you put a zero there. The zero one's easier to think about. Um, you get Sn things on the left, and you get Sn minus one choices of what you're going to put on the right. Um, this is the world where you've got some digits, you put a zero here, it's now slightly shorter because I'm doing 2n minus 2 instead of 2n minus 1. Um, but you could put whatever valid sequence you like here and a sort of completely different valid sequence. Actually got a different length this time, so you've got this kind of choice about um, what you're doing there. Um, if you put a 1 in the middle though, then uh-oh, you need to pad it around with zeros, um, and then you'll get, uh, so your choice will be s n minus 1, s n minus 2, because after the zeros you've got shorter sequences left. Alex says they don't remember it. Uh, ah, Patika, Patika is here. I've forgotten how to stress the C in your name. Will Oxford ever go back to in-person interviews? How much explanation do we need before? I love, love the future questions. The future questions give me hope that <laughs> we, will, we, will, we will have a normal year at some point. Current vote, uh, by colleges was to do in uh, interviews online. It's a vote done by colleges. Colleges do the interviews. Um, I'm not expecting a re-vote anytime soon, but there is a process. Um, okay. Pet Ika got there. Uh, right. Okay. I'm hoping that this sort of turns out to be the expression in the question. I'm not very hopeful because they look very different, um, and I've kind of forgotten how this question works. So I'm just going to keep flailing around until I get there. If that's all right with everyone, uh, I can kind of see it. I can kind of see it. So this is saying that s mm -hmm. s two n minus two is equal to, and then I've got this s n minus one, s n minus two plus s n s n minus one, which I don't love. Uh, from a kind of structure stuff, there's these f n's. They look a bit like s n minus two. Hmm. There's this factor of two that's really stressing me out, but I'm just gonna. Plug on and see what I get. Um, so you can kind of add two to each each of these terms, right? I'm using the relationship. The, the f's are out by two compared to the compared to the s's. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to talk at the same time. Oh, is it just going to be that this is f n plus f n minus one? Yeah, it's just this, isn't it? Is it just this? Yeah, it's just this. That's not too bad. I was really, really stressed. Oh, I'm out by, <laughs> I am out by some. Ah, oh, life, eh? Eh, close enough. Hmm. This wasn't this, this was this. Because I should subtract for the zeros. No. Still confused, still confused, still confused. No, I'm that's that correction was wrong. Don't you love it when the correction's the wrong thing? N equals N minus one thing, is it? Is it? I'm worried about the left hand side as well, isn't it? I just totally wrong. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> I'm out by one. <laughs> uh, what is this nonsense about it having n things on the left? Who wrote that? I did. What is that? That's out by two. Did I get it right the last time? Yeah, I got it right last time. I got it wrong here. There's my error. Yeah, people are helping me out in chat. That is my mistake. Ooh, what's a nice color. A bit purple for errors. So that n minus two means that this should have been an n minus two and this should have been an n minus three. Ugh. Which means that the shared term, oh gosh, that messes up all my following algebra, doesn't it? 
I thought this would be a fun exercise in fixing your own mistakes, but uh, no, it hasn't really worked like that, has it? <laughs> Great, I think we got there. I'm going to claim we've got there, because then I'm going to split up that one to be an fn plus an fn minus one, and then everything is right in the world. I get the fn squared, and I get two of those terms. Ah, oh boy. Out by one error was actually an out by two error. Three lines earlier. Don't let me do math, say. Eh? Sometimes I think this Matt thing, Matt live stream thing, might be a kind of sort of ritual humiliation thing that I'm being punished for something in my past. Oh well, here we go. Uh, part seven, counting, counting time. Uh, if you want to get to f two to the k, well, you can sort of just use this one, right? Except you can't just use this one because this says to double the value down here, you need fn, and you also need fn minus one. So we should keep track of f2k, brilliant, got a happy feeling about that, got an expression for it, but that expression is going to involve f2 to the k minus 1 down here, if n is, uh, I guess it's 2 to the k minus 1 minus 1, <laughs> if, if n is 2 to the k minus 1, then I'll get my f2k on the left, but uh, bother, on the right I've got things like f2 to the k and f2 to the k f2 to the k minus 1, and I've got f2 to the k minus 1 <gasps> minus 1. So, yeah. Um, so I need to keep track of both of those. So the solution is to keep track of this thing and also this thing, to reluctantly calculate both. Um, and you can do those, you can keep track of both of them. Luckily, we've got a formula for this one as well, which involves the same stuff. Um, there's some number of operations you're doing. It depends if you can multiply by two. I'm sure the markers are going to be very generous here because there are some disagreements <laughs> about what counts as a multiplication. Um, and it's not really a counting test anyway, but hey, uh, that you used to do every time you want to double the value down here, you need to keep track of all of these. Uh, so it's about five or six operations there each time round. So it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. So it's seven. Yeah, sometimes I count it, it's five, sometimes it's seven. Uh, multiply by k, plus or minus some constant. Uh, we have asked James to spend longer than... Oh, I wrote that. <laughs> That's me. Um, I always make a mistake. And that felt, felt like a good thing. I considered, would people have got it? If I said, we, James made a mistake in the solution of question six, James has been fed to a dragon as punishment. But I thought that was getting too meta. Uh, have I heard of the Lambert W function? Yeah, I love the Lambert W function. Pretty sure I've got the Lambert W function in my thesis somewhere. Is there a lot of things, a lot of things in my thesis? Not a brag. Um, recommend a maths book. Um, currently, uh, a book that I want to get that I've heard, had recommended to me, so I've just passed that on, um, is Annotated Alice. Um, it's Alice in Wonderland with annotations by Martin Gardner. Martin Gardner, a uh, mathematician, maths enthusiast. Um, maybe your sort of person from the middle of the 20th century and, and onwards. Um, person is alive for more than just the middle of the 20th century. What am I saying? Annotated Alice, Alice in Wonderland, but with annotations to explain the kind of mathematical references that Alice in Wonderland is full of. Alice in Wonderland was written by Lewis Carroll, who was a mathematician. Uh, right, good. Uh, being punished for asking scary questions about very large square numbers. Yeah, do people not like that? You want to like that? People don't like that. I saw the comments saying this is just not a Mac question. I thought it was a Mac question. I sort of quite liked it. Um, it's about multiples of numbers. So if you if you can spot why this one is not a square, then you're on a good start, I think. And if nothing else, you've eliminated one of the wrong answers. Um, so maybe think to yourself about why that one's not a square. And if you haven't seen the answer to the question and you're coming back to it now, um, that one says 987654000, um, which is a huge number, but it ends in 000. And it sort of almost, I don't know, it doesn't say 321, right? It's a combo breaker. Put on C for 1B. 
Oh gosh, I can't remember. I think you're correct. Now oh, there we go. Now for the answer. Ah, oh, Mark forgot to change an answer. S looks last three digits. Yeah, I think last three digits does does you good for all of them actually. Um, last three digits reveals quite a bit about the um, what the numbers are multiple of. Uh, offended by the existence of this question, but I think I got it right nevertheless. That is cold. I I, I like that. <laughs> um, squares don't end in three. I don't really know if people know that. There's a different way. I think that's what I said in the 10 minute video. Um, squares don't end in three, but there's also this method where you say, if you know about multiples of three. Um, I haven't been allowed to ask you this, I suppose, but do people know about multiples of three? There's this thing where you like add the digits. I reckon some people use this for the question, but maybe not very many. Yeah, 25 is a square number. Um, I don't think the marks and multiple choice. Marks working out. Um, yeah, so there's this trick about adding together digits for multiples of three, but maybe nobody, maybe nobody knows that except me. So. Uh, also, you start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three is 21. And three more is 24, and then you do 2 plus 4. It feels really weird, right, going from 24 to 2 plus 4. It's about 6. So this is a multiple of 3, but not 9. I don't know if people know that trick. Yeah, it's called divisibility rules for 3 and 9. Okay, you use them. One anonymous person. Um, oh, we messed up. We messed up somebody's guessing strategy. Um, Rowan says I've taken inspiration from the kangaroos, which... <laughs> I, I think I know what you mean. You did that too. I do that. Um, great, okay. Um, if you think about multiples, basically, uh, poor, uh, war, uh, war, war, what am I doing? Um, this one is a multiple of three, but not nine. Um, this one is a multiple of five, but not 25. This one is a multiple of a hundred, but not uh, 10,000. There's a kind of pattern to some of them. Um, that one is square. And then this one is like suspiciously close to 10 to the power of eight. Cool. Uh, mark scheme for this paper. Well, you already know how many marks each part is. Uh, the And you have a 10 minute solution. Uh, the kind of sample work solution, excuse me, sample work solution coming out. Um, uh, later, end of the cycle, January. Um, and yeah, so this is not on the syllabus, uh, but I think some people would have seen it. Um, the other thing that people do is that squares don't end in three. Um, that's really not hard to check. Um, it's not obvious, but if you know some small square numbers, then maybe you can spot that none of them end in three. And maybe you can think, does this continue? He says, trying to square 10. I'm realizing he's missed eight. Good. Um, maybe does this continue? And then if you think about like your multipl multiplication table for like the last digit, you can even like, work out. I don't think anyone would actually go and write this out during a test, but if you think about your multiplication digit, then the kind of last digits work like this. Five times five. 5, 25, which ends in 5, and they're like, it's the last digit that matters. If you're doing like 130, 1038 squared, then the last digit uh, is only affected by the 64 bit. There's like loads of stuff in here in the multiplication, but it's just the 4 at the end. That, whoop, in here in the multiplication, it's just the 4 that matters. Whew. Why is Herb saying, Rowan, can we not talk about 7? It wasn't a 7, was there? Um, we don't talk about multiple of seven rule, right? Yeah, multiple of seven, Rowan in chat. I missed it. Multiple of seven rule. Seven is just not very similar to ten. Uh, good, okay, let me have a quick look at my screenshot of what we're talking about. Uh, one G got a lot of votes somehow. What was G? What was G? Oh, the quadratics. The bevy of quadratics. Uh, huh, it feels like it should have a repeated real root, doesn't it? 
These are three very, very similar looking quadratics. It feels like it should have a real repeated root. So the answer should be B. Uh, the answer is not B. Um, and you can work that out with discriminants. Let's go. Um, so the facts we're given is just a really fancy way of saying that B squared minus 4AC is zero. And also that C squared minus 4AB is zero. The letters are mixed up here, but it's discriminant is like this. Repeated real root. Okay, so we know, let's write them out again, b squared minus 4ac is 0, and c squared minus 4ab equals 0. We want the value of a squared minus 4bc. Now, we've only got two equations. We're probably not going to solve these, um, but maybe we could try and aim for a kind of a squared kind of thing and a bc kind of thing. Um, I kind of want to just re rewrite these as b squared equals 4ac and c squared equals 4ab. And then I want a bc, so I think I want to multiply to get some bcs in here. Uh, 16, 4 times 4, if I can multiply. Um, and then these are non-zero, so I'm allowed to divide by bc. I'm just trying to work out what bc is. I can see the bc combination, I've got some b's and c's. Feels sensible. Um, bc is equal to 16a squared. This looks quite nice. Uh, which means that this is a squared take away 64 a squared, which is minus 63 a squared, and a is also non zero. So this looks very negative. If the discriminant is negative, that means it's got no real distant, no real roots. Just weird to me, I suppose. Um, oh, hi, Boris. Thanks for, thanks for coming along. There's more than one Boris in the world, come on. Um, yeah. Um, we did talk about the multiple of three thing, the question setting panel. Um, it's a small part of one of the short questions. And we got the last digit thing. It was another plausible way that people would get in to realizing to get into the question to realize that too many threes. I wonder if you can do a. I realise it's also quite close to 10 to the 8. Not very close to 10 to the 8, though, is it? Is it quite close to 11? Ah, oh, no, there's loads of squares around here. Never mind. So this one is quite close to 100 million, and this one is also a bit close to 100 million, but not close enough for me to do anything with that. Okay, so this turned out to just be algebra. The quadratics never really came into it. They're not really, I mean, they're quadratic equations, but if you convert them straight into algebra and then do algebra stuff on the, on the equations. I've seen this question so many times that I've learned the route through the algebra. I guess you could do stuff like trying to solve this for B, to say that B is like plus or minus 2 root AC, and that C is equal to 2 plus or minus root AB, and then try and plug them in. And then, then it gets a bit confusing because you don't know whether this is plus or minus, but uh, and you have a root BC, you get a root BC back in again, and you want to plug it in again, and maybe you sort of nested keep plugging it back in. Ugh. Good, cool. Okay, it's six o'clock. Don't forget to look away from the screen if you've been looking at a screen for the last hour. And uh, I'm going to drink some water. Question about Sunday stream, which means I also need to say that I'm not doing stream this Sunday. Uh, I'm meeting some friends. Uh, I'm meeting some old university friends who also did maths degrees. Um, actually, let's do this as a quick break. I, I think this will be fun. Uh, what do I want? I want a word cloud? No. Uh, I'm going to do an open text. Let's go for it. Uh, what should I ask? So I'm going to a party which is mostly maths graduates um, who have uh, some of them still working in maths, some of them working on other stuff. Uh, uh, I am going to crowdsource here um, suggestions in chat for what I should ask them and maybe at some point I'll bring back um, bring back their responses. I think this might be a fun party game if nothing else. 
Um, brilliant. Uh, so we'll take a week off from chill maths, but extra chill in a way. Good. I don't know if I've opened that or not. Uh, <laughs> excellent top question. <laughs> ah, great. <laughs> They're going to love this. Brilliant. Yep. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Good. Okay. Um, it's actually, it's a birthday party for context. It's, um, uh, it's my friend's 32nd birthday. So nice round number. Oh, little binary joke for you there. Um, and I'll be back at some point. It's probably a normal number. Oh, normal in the sense of a uh, distribution of its digits. Very quick fun maths in interlude. Um, what if I, what I think they're going to say? I'll ask them, but it's pi a normal number. It behaves just like a normal number. It would almost be weird if it wasn't. Yes, that's what the what their name is. It's not a question. That's just a, this just just this an opinion about mechanics, which they might. Um, <laughs> Miles would be excellent. Ah, <laughs> uh, good. Okay. Right. Right. While I'm while I'm crowdsourcing things to talk about. <laughs> Things to talk about at a party <laughs> is the most mathematician thing ever, right? Ah, oh, come on, chat. I've got a horrible job. I've got to go to a party and talk to people. Oh, help me out. Is he better than pi? Uh, probability of two people having the same birthday. Oh, that there are two people with the same birthday at this party. I'm one of them. It's not my birthday at the party, but uh, I know enough of the attendees to know that um, somebody at the party shares a birthday with me. Uh, <laughs> oh look, Slido's doing a kind of summary. Slido says that I should ask about maths and mechanics. Uh -huh. I had a maths question, but I'm too squared to ask it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hopefully they're not watching now, otherwise they're going to hear that joke before I'm ready to deploy it in a party setting. I don't think they're ready for my maths jokes in a party setting. This is also a cover for me to check what on earth I'm doing next. I think it's probably question two. Let's get it on the screen. Um, um, people wondering what we're talking about with Sunday Maths. Um, I've started trying to stream on Twitch. Um, the idea is that I'm streaming on Twitch unprofessionally. This, believe it or not, is the professional version of me. The unprofessional version of me has a Twitch account. Uh, Right, good. Okay, I think that's almost enough. Yep, nobody's typing. It's the best thing about turtles. Yeah, okay, two people are typing. Let, let people finish typing, and I'll talk about question two as well. Um, wait, <laughs> the bacon games question is kind of slightly scuffed, but I think I know what you're going for. Going for mostly pie based. That's interesting. Okay, um, so much so that the slider has added pie to the um, the. Uh, List of things I should ask guys. Fine in there too. It's probably better than both pi and e. Right, we can do a hierarchy. Good. Score gets published. When did I say score gets published? I publish an average score. So on the map website, there's a list of average scores for previous rounds, and I publish that at the end of the round these days. Uh, James, is it pronounced? A question in chat. Good, right. Is it pronounced mat or M-A-T? I always say mat. I like that it forms a word. Like step and unlike Tamua. Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, question two is nice and easy on the eye. Five parts, um, including the normal kind of graph sketching activity at the start to do this kind of thing, which is a bit like one over X, but add some X to it. X gets very large, so it's going to do something like that. It's nice and symmetric for what it's worth. Um, I'll find some turning points. I guess I've got to differentiate this. Can I do a version of the previous joke where I say, that's right, every time I've drawn a weird shaped letter P, I've you've got a, it's in the question. Oh, so I can't be bothered. I had a math joke, but I'm too square to tell you. There you go, I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> um, Rowan would like an actual survey. <laughs> cool, wrapping them up. Um, <laughs> is Poisson real? Wait, I have a... Oh, 
Actually, maybe I've prepped you, but one of my friends is very heavily into the Bayesian argument, the argument about whether Bayesian maths is real or not. Which maybe I've set you up. Okay, okay. I think we're now on favourite numbers and just generic maths questions. So I'm going to turn off the poll. Thank you for party suggestions. That's that's very helpful to me personally. Sorry, the one person who was typing. Um, okay, okay. Serious professional live stream. Um, okay, we got some turning points. Oh, I could find the value of the turning points as well. How am I going to find the value when x is one? Ah, I could. It's the number two. Um, okay, down here. I think it's easier to work on the right hand side uh, to work out what p1x squared is. Um, so it's x plus 1 over x squared. And there's this cross term from multiplying out two lots of x times 1 over x. Uh, I'm told to subtract 2, so then it's going to be equal to p2. So everything is right in the world. This is all good. That's not quite enough. Writing, well, maybe it is, I don't know. Um, then we're asked for an expression for p3 of x in terms of p1x. Um, my intuition is that p3, which involves x cubed, probably involves cubing p1. So probably I want to do p1x cubed. And just see what happens. And again, this is a bit like saying the right-hand side is easier to work with. We don't have a right-hand side yet. Um, we know it involves p1 of x, but we don't know what's going on on the right-hand side. Um, so... In some sense, we've got to try making it up and just seeing what happens. I mean, if I do that, I get x cubed plus 3x plus 3 over x plus 1 over x cubed. Um, I'm doing the multiplication out too fast, but really, um, I know. Maybe you maybe you'd prefer it if I did more steps or something, but uh, I just want to get to the, the, the bit where I circle terms. <laughs> um, these terms make me think, brilliant, I've found it, I've got p3. Um, the terms in the middle make me think, oh no. Um, but luckily, they are just a multiple of uh, p1 again. Okay, so my final answer is that it's p1x cubed minus 3p1x. Excellent stuff. Okay. Um, <laughs> am I Oxford? Oxford rep sounds like I let people into clubs or something. Um, that they need a run like. Oh no, that's brilliant. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't read that up before, that's really funny. And you didn't get any thumbs ups, but that was a very funny comment. Um, uh, so Oxford is a little bit like the CIA or the FBI, um, in that my birthday is top secret. Nobody knows it. Uh, wait. Oh yeah, okay. Sorry, that's a continuation. I hope you're confusing me, which is a new and interesting way to... No, wait, I'm always confused. Uh, yeah, part five wars may be a bit too sneaky, if I have to say that, in my opinion. Is it too much? It's quite a lot. We'll get there. Um, we're now about to get 10 marks for solving some polynomials. Um, they've been designed so that we can't spot a root of this one. Um, but maybe we could spot that it's got some relationship to the question it's in, which is about balanced powers of x. Um, the powers are not balanced here. Um, there's 431 x to the 0. Um, we would like some x to the negative powers, really. N a positive one of a, a half. We'd like some negative powers. Um, we can get some um, if we just divide by... Uh, if we divide by x, then we'll get some negative powers. We'll get things like um, uh, in here... Oh, we get some 10x and we'll get 1 over x. I'm not really happy about that. That doesn't quite match up. But if I divide by x squared instead, then I can see, aha, these coefficients kind of match up. And what I'll get is x squared, and I'll get 1 over x squared down this end. I'll get x, and I'll get 1 over x, and I'll get minus 10 in the middle. Um, so this is really nice. This is p2 plus p1 minus 10 which I mean, we know about p2. p2 is p1 squared minus 2. So this is a little quadratic for p1. So then if this is going to be equal to 0, then well, I'm going to solve a quadratic. I'm sorry that the letter p is so weird for me. There we go. OK. Um, this used to be calculated from only question 1. 
Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. Real Fermat says it's not taking the same question one again. Yeah, it's a different version. I, I'm not. I don't think anyone's really imagining it to be that we just switch out the question one from the regular map with the question one from the the, the multiple choice from the additional map because the well, disruption is really complicated. So I don't think anyone's going to try and break apart the map score, add off bits from the two different tests. It feels feels weird. Divided by x to the four. Ah, divided by x to the four is also good. I think, well, it's not bad, right? Because if you divide by x to the 4, minus 10 over x squared, plus, what's this, uh, 1 over x cubed, plus 1 over x to the 4, maybe now you could notice that if you then add the original equation, you would get, um, so if you add the original equation back onto this, you would then get um, p4 plus p3, take away 10 p2, plus a p1, uh, and the 1s cancel out. Now, we haven't told you to work out p4 in terms of p1, but you can go and work out p4 in terms of p1, um, and then you would get some equation for p1. Um, I've added together this one and this one. So dividing by p4, x, x to the 4 is also fine. Um, you just need one extra step, and then you're working a slightly more complicated later on. I should just have CS radius questions. Um, the multiple choice questions on Matt are already... CS friendly, CS candidates already do them. That's the, the same idea here. Um, the syllabus of the maths are the same for CS people. Okay, um, so that's question four. This is sort of like blah, 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 P1 equals, or P1 equals, and then blah, 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 solve. Because if you know that P1 is equal to some number, then you've got a quadratic. Um, I've drawn a kind of squiggle there instead of actual maths, but you kind of follow, I think, that you can turn P1 equals a number into um, algebra. So it's the number three. I don't need to be I don't need to be weird. It's just the number three. Quadratics. Everywhere. Uh, oh I'm adding, sorry, plus two. Yep. They don't cancel. Yep. Point taken. Thank you. Uh, the computer science department is always responsible for question five and six. Um, if you enjoyed Fibonacci numbers, uh, that one was originally proposed by someone in computer science and then worked on by the team. Uh, I'm trying to make I'm trying to make, make it more clear. There's a more accurate version where the questions get worked on. Um, it's not the case that someone emerges out of nowhere, fully formed map question disappears. That's their map question. It's a bit more complicated than that. Um, okay. Part five is maybe the point where not everybody gets five marks if we haven't hit that already, because this is really tough. Uh, you could, I suppose, what could you do? You could divide by x to the seven and do the difference instead of the sum. Yeah, you could do that. You could divide by x to the seven, do the difference instead of the sum, find expressions for p7, p6, p5, p4, <gasps> p3 to p2 and p1 in terms of p1. And then solve. Uh, that's going to involve a p1 to the 7 though, isn't it? So it might just turn out to be the same degree 7 polynomial now that I think about it. Or it might be a different one. Yeah, p1 probably satisfies a different degree 7 polynomial. Yeah, p1's got nicer roots. So it's probably maybe got some repeated roots. I don't know. Um, Yeah, Alling's right. Um, oh, wait, 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 I wanted to take that one. Someone's question got, hang on, someone's question got dismissed for being, I'm reloading it, haha. -ha. Take that chat moderation. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I initially got rejected, but I'm going for it. Um, we do go on about how much money we have. I think go on is maybe a bit strong. University does have a lot of money. This is the strongest I'm legally allowed to be. The university does have a lot of money. The university also did spend a lot of money, in my opinion, on a third-party contractor to run the administration of the test, and it didn't go well. Um, now, it's quite easy after the fact to say, Oxford's got lots of money, should have spent more money on it. Maybe that's easy to say, maybe that's not easy to say, but yeah, I'm aware that Oxford's got lots of money, 
This is my thing, math submissions test. Should Oxford have spent all of their money on the map? Probably not. Should Oxford have got value for money? Discussion to be had. Legally, this, I think this is as much as I'm allowed to say right now. Okay, good. Um, yeah, finding that x equals 1 factor. This is other trick you know for polynomials, uh, which is the factor theorem. My handwriting's gone awful today. Um, uh, like x equals 1 works. I guess the way you spot x equals 1 is the kind of way that the equation folds over. So that these terms and these terms are kind of opposites. The question's been training you to look at the two extreme ends of the of the polynomial, and here they, they balance, right? They balance, especially if you put in x equals 1. If you could get rid of all the x's, the literal coefficients balance. Um, in some ways, x equals 1 is the one of the nicest things to put in, because you just ignore all the x's. Don't apologize, Sishal, it's fine. I think I, I think you try you try to protect me, but uh, it's fine. All right, now I'm going to look at the moderation. Yeah, cool, right, good. Okay. Um, <laughs> people are now suggesting next year again, which gives me hope. People talk about next year. <laughs> Miles, right? Okay. Um, that was question two. Because after you've spotted the x equals 1 factor, it turns into a very nice... Oh, well, let's do the thing, right? Let's do the factorization. Everyone else in the room has had to do the factorization. I think it's only fair that I ever go at the factorization. I used to be much better at these, you know, um, back when pulling out factors of polynomials was like one of the main things I was doing. Um, x minus 1, so this gives me x to the 6. Uh, it gives me x to the 7, but it also, oh no, gives me minus x to the 6, but I want to, so I want to add on some more x to the 6s. But that'll give oh no to give me minus three x to the five. So kind of into that, but not I want more of that. So I'm minus two x four, and that'll give me the total of minus five x to the fives. But oh no, that'll give me plus two x to the four, and I'm really not up for that. I want to subtract nine x cubed so that I end up with minus seven x to the fours. But then that'll give me plus nine x cubed. This is kind of going on a bit of a roller coaster because now I want to subtract two x squared in order to get that down to seven. Then I'll see 2x squared, so I don't really want them, I want 5. Um, so I'm going to add on 3x, that'll give me 3 more x squared. So take off the 3x, I actually want to add 1 on the end there to make sure that I get up to uh, minus 2x's and the 1's match up at the end. Um, and this polynomial is nice. Um, if I divide it by x cubed, it turns into some mess involving p3, p2, p1. Uh, no, Alex, you're not done. <laughs> I think that's really hard to spot. It's a twist on the question. Nothing's been factor theorem so far, um, and then out of nowhere, factor theorem. Um, so I think it's that kind of, uh, those five marks are kind of, I think, locked in a way. That part of the question is kind of locked behind the exploration stage of like just trying weird stuff on the polynomial, like looking for roots. Um, uh, another proposal on the panel, maybe you'd have preferred this, um, it would be to take this polynomial uh, and multiply it by x, bit too easy, right? If I just multiply it by x, then you spot the zero root straight away, and there's kind of no challenge. The, the coefficients would also look very nice. Um, so in some sense, I think this was the right version of the question to do, but you don't really want to hear that. Um, right, okay. Now I'm going to check, check things. I think there are six real solutions at the end of the day. Oh, seven. Seven real solutions, if I count x equals one as well, which I should. Um, I think there are seven real solutions, because I think this turns into a cubic for p1. Oh, my goodness. Um, which then has three roots, and each one of those corresponds to two. And I think they all work out to have two real roots. I think there are seven. I like the idea of the mat, doing the mat on an iPad with an e-pencil. That's actually pretty similar to how some of my students do maths. Um, some of my students at uni um, submit their work that they've done on I don't know, whatever laptop or trackpad or whatever tablet machine they've got. Um, it's not all iPads and e-pencils. Um, but yeah, it surprises me. You know, it makes me feel very old. Uh, the kids are using technology to do maths. Um, I like using a pencil. Right, good, okay. 
Okay, chat's being actually really nice. You're, you're doing great. You're doing great chat. We're going to get get through. What are we doing? Mac questions? Yeah, that's the job. That is my job. One I got some votes as well, and maybe one C. Uh, so I might do those quite quickly. And I've been asked to pick out stories. Oh gosh, it's calculation bash, isn't it? Calculation started in one way. I don't think I don't think previous versions of the question are interesting to people, right? Because if I tell you about previous versions of the question, then either you'll say that's the same or that sounds much worse. Why are you telling me about a worse version of the question? Or you'll say that's much better. Why didn't you do the better versions? I like to make people happy. Um, oh, if x equals minus one. Oh gosh. Oh, that is a new level of evil. Anonymous who spotted an excellent. In general, if you've done some work and made some progress, then the mark's supposed to the mark scheme's supposed to reward that in general. Um, okay. Um, so, I think the idea here is that we know the polynomial's got degree three. That means it's a cubic. Uh, and we know it's where all three of its roots are. It's got a root here, disguised in the fact that p of 0 is 0, and it's got a repeated root at x equals m. I think that means that it's x times x minus m squared, or maybe with some prefactor at the front. Um, if there are any more brackets in here, any more terms, then well, the degree would get too large. The degree is 3. Um, and I have to have this 0 root, and I have to have a repeated root at m. I can't, I can't fit anything else in, except maybe this kind of constant prefactor, um, like the number three out the front or something. Okay, uh, and I haven't used these facts yet, uh, the one and two facts over here. Um, so I think I'm supposed to use those next. a, one minus m squared, and then 2a, two minus m squared. Um, and I think I'm supposed to just go and solve. Have I got any clever ideas? No. I have no clever ideas. Oh no, I can combine these, right? I can do some division to get rid of the a's. Oh, I don't love it. Is m equal to 1? No. Is m equal to 2? No. I'm in. I'm in. Let's go. Let's do some division. Nobody will have done this. Let me know in chat if you did this. No, no, no joking. Did, did anybody do a ratio of the two to eliminate? Like, no, surely not. This is just not how people think about maths. So it turns it into a quadratic, right? I'll be honest, I think this is a bit experimental way of doing the question. This is not how I would... Why am I doing this? It's not how I would do the question. It's not how you would do the question. Hey, but isn't it neat? It's just kind of worked. It's just kind of worked. Oh, I like that a lot. The m squared cancelled in a surprising manner. Ooh, eliminate the a. So I think a sensible way to phrase this would be more like a is equal to 1 over 1 minus m. Then square it and then plug it in. 2 is equal to 2 over 1 minus m squared. 2 minus m, and that gets you my equation down here. You did division! Someone did division! Oh, maybe they're telling me to be... I'm going to choose to believe. I'm going to live in the reality where that's the correct thing. Somehow compatible with your guesswork strategy. Thanks for the update. Um, sorry about the lack of option D. Um, apparently. I'm not just telling you this so that as misdirection for future years or something, but I genuinely don't look at the distribution of which letters have come up as the answers. I think that's the only way to run a test like this. Um, if you start getting into the meta game, the mind games, which I think some people do, I think some people go, ah, the people will be expecting an even mixes of A's, B's, C's, and D's, and E's, so I will trip them by making everything E. I think as soon as you start playing that mind game, um, you've lost the mind game, because young people will always outthink you. Um, and Mars get E because none of them beat E yet. <laughs> right, again, this is not the game we're playing. <laughs> okay, I'm missing a 2 in front of the 1 minus m squared. Sounds likely, doesn't it? Oh, no, 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 or down here? There's a two here as well, right? There's a two here and a two here. I think my twos are good. Maybe you mean in this one. Uh, I think my twos are good. I've got weird twos in weird places. I'm going to call it like that. 
Uh, that is, I, that was more slick than I thought. I'll be honest. Um, oh, let's be honest, yeah. Um, I think, oh, I think this is based on an idea I originally submitted, but my version that I submitted was horrible and it was way too much algebra. So this is evidence that the panel is, is, is making things better, right? If it was just me, you'd have to do a horrible version of this question. It's not just me. Oh no, I'm the bad guy. Uh, there are votes for C as well. Let's have a look at C. And then I think I want to do half an hour of looking at long questions if that's alright. Uh, C, it turns out to be independent of the number 10. The number 10 is there for a technical reason that I'll explain in a second. If you draw in some radii, then not too bad. Um, what have we got? R1, R1, R1. R2, 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 and uh, some 45 degrees, probably. Yes, this is a square. <laughs> this is a square looking thing. That's a square looking thing. These distances are both like 1 minus R1 minus R2 or something, something like that. From like this is R2, this is R1. The whole thing is 1. Is it 1? Yep, side length 1. So the left over bit is like the same in both cases. So it's much like 45 degrees. It's the same across as it is high. Um, so in there, I've got a 45 degree triangle. Uh, so I should do like reading reading across. I've got R1, and then I've got well, what is that? R1 plus R2 divided by root two, and then this is R2. So overall, one across is equal to R1 plus R2 plus, and then this middle bit where there's some like root 2 triangle stuff, cos of 45. Can't even remember cosine of 45 degrees. I'm pretty sure it's 1 over root 2, right? Yeah. Um. Uh. Same method but get D. Oh no. With a 5 in it, not on this one. I don't think you're bad at maths. Maybe I should say that as a sort of general encouraging advice. Um, do you get these questions wrong? I don't think you're bad at maths. I think you're probably good at maths, just for turning up to the test. Um, the test is sort of already selected for being good at maths just by people choosing to do it, um, choosing to be in a situation where they have to do it. It's already selected for people who are good at maths. Um, the impossible job that it has to try and do is to decide or help to decide which universities people are studying at but out of people who are good at maths uh oh thought about it during the technical disruption you say that very anonymously you say that very anonymously uh but i also got questions wrong with mr may see this is the kind of mess mess that people mess that people get in right uh yes this was your favourite question, or maybe the previous one. Uh, 10 was there as a technical reason. Oh yeah, 10's there technical, and then some of the answers are a bit 10 themed. Because this thing, this equation we've got has got no 10s in it. I mean, you can put some 10s in if you like. If you want to insist that R1 is 10 times R2, you can then solve for R2, and then you're asked for R1 plus R2. The thing you're asked for is just in here. It's like this. If I call it BA. With like tens around and it's just sort of like you know decent root two shenanigans to solve for this thing um i think it turns out to be two minus root two which is the same answer as a hexagon question from 2016 which makes me think you could draw a cool diagram but i don't know i said the sum of some radii it's not the side length of the thing anyway um this is independent of the uh radii of the circles, provided that the circles exist. If you turn it sideways, by the way, if you turn it sideways, it's kind of like big circle, small circle, and it's maybe kind of surprising that that um, big semicircle, small semicircle, maybe it's kind of surprising that that, I mean, if you make one of them larger than the other, the distance, this, this distance times pi is kind of constant, which is a bit weird. Um, 
if the question told you that it was independent of the ratio, then some sneaky people, not you, I'm sure, but some sneaky people would try to make the question easier for themselves by choosing the ratio to be something very nice so that they do like half as much work or something because they'd have a midpoint for the point of tangency if you set the circles to the same radius. Um, if you ask about a big general thing um, that includes several special cases, um, then uh, yeah, you can get into trouble like people working out which one it is by looking at special cases. Um, for example, if I told you that um, so if I told you that the sum of numbers from k is 1 to n, let's pretend you don't know this formula. Um, if I told you that this is n, n plus 1 over 2 um, for all n, then no, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know how triangle numbers work. Um, okay, what do I want to say about other questions? We're getting a little bit hard. Um, Heart rate, yeah, I'm really sorry. Your examiner officer said you'd fail. That's a bit harsh. Oh, technical reason. Yeah, technical reason was just there to um technical reason was just there to stop people setting the circle to have the same size. Um, very keen for the circles not to be the same size to make it a little bit harder. Um, and it, it doesn't actually matter what, what you set the number to. It's a bit weird. It doesn't matter what that number is, provided it's not as large as there's an extreme case. There's limits on how big you can make that number for the questions that still make sense. Uh, a draft at one point said 100 on the principle that it doesn't matter. And then we worked out that you can't actually have the ratio be 100 because you can't have the ratio of the radii be that extreme. The small circle kind of gets trapped in the corner at some point. <laughs> it's really weird. It's such a weird setup. Um, anyway, yeah, you could use Pythagoras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find out one plus one. Yeah, in my algebra, it's kind of already there. But it's kind of, yeah, this is like R1, R2 on the hypotenuse of that triangle. Very Pythagoras y kind of place for it to be. Okay, um, I'm going to say we've got um, 20 minutes left, and I want to make people kind of happy. So I think I'm just going to look at questions quite quickly um, and check that uh, people are kind of happy a bit. Well, there's a bit of question six. Question six, love. Uh, I didn't eat breakfast or lunch, and no, I finished the mat at 3 p.m. Blimey. And then we offered you another one. Um, uh, you disrupt patterns of disruption, my RCM. Yeah. Good, okay. Uh, a is logarithms of a good logarithm. It's a double hint. The hint's there for two reasons. One, to make sure that you, you know, over here, you've got like log base 10 of 2 squared and log base 10 of 3 to the 5, and nobody wants to work that out. You're faced at this point with working out. 2 squared times 3 to the 5. Nobody wants to do that calculation. Um, but not to miss a trick, we could have just told you that it's 972, um, but one person on the panel uh, suggested that it would be good to give a, a prompt towards... Sorry, that was almost the word prompt for a hint prompt. 50% hint, 50% prompt. Uh, prompt towards standard form, where you write it as like this, because that prompts you to do something like this. And then think, oh yeah, log base 10 of 10 is ten, is 1. So this is going to be 2 plus log base 10 of 9.72. And if you do something similar to the other terms, you can work out, uh -huh, these things are pretty comparable at some point. Uh, Henry, yeah, people, I think I've I've seen... I've seen an induction method for question five. Um, no one's going to stop you. That hint was too much. Gave it away too much. Oh, too much. Uh, <laughs> is this for real? <laughs> the problem was below the answers. By the time you've read the options, so you read them and you went 2BC, I mean, they're multiple B's, 5 F, you've got to read them in order to know which is the class to try for. Alpha 2 gamma, you read 2 alpha 5 and they thought, oh yeah, it's obviously, there's all being there. Um, oh, there's a hint. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, That's one of the best things anyone's claimed today. My eyes hadn't reached this line by the time I'd done question 1A. Amazing stuff. Um, D is 
uh, quadratics inside quadratics, keeping track of whether things are positive or negative. Um, F is difference of two squares in a bit of a disguise. E, e, oh. I've waited years to talk about E. I've wanted to include this a question. I've wanted to include a question like this for ages. Um, all right. It's really hard to come up with interesting things involving arithmetic regressions and geometric regressions. I think I did it there, and then it got worked on, and then it got oh, found this version of the numbers where it just simplifies down beautifully, which is very good. Um, H is here because uh, what's well, good question about triangles? Um, you don't want to get too extreme with your triangle sides, otherwise. We get a long pointy triangle, we get a very wide triangle, neither of which has got very much area. Uh, luckily, you know this formula, which tells you exactly what you want to do. Uh, e does simplify really nicely. Good stuff. Prompt. Hinty prompt. Uh, it looked like the hint was part of B. Ah, <sighs> bums. Sorry, I shouldn't swear. Yeah, online. Was there not enough space? Why was the math so slightly off? Uh, legal reasons, let's not say too much. Um, we haven't talked about three, uh, which uh, involved writing down maximum values of cosine and then realizing that uh, you know what cosine does, so you can talk about the function that's been applied to the cosine. Um, and then a twist down here to convert some cosines and sines together. Hi, Stanley. Uh, was there. One question which had two part sixes. Very, very observant, Stanley. Uh, question six. Uh, question six, I believe in the online version might have missed this eye here. In the scheme of things, I'm hoping that didn't cause any chaos beyond the, the existing chaos. I'm astonished anyone spotted this. I suppose you look at them very closely. Or is it two part sixes followed by part seven or something? It's an I. Um, oh, F of SEM stands for free school meals. It's something that uh, it's data that universities get access to and can consider as context around someone's education in the United Kingdom. I mean, it's correlated with a lot of other um, socioeconomic metrics. Um, so in some senses, I mean, it's correlated a lot with um, benefits, of course, uh, and universities have all got a responsibility to consider their, social, so their responsibilities on social mobility and representing the United Kingdom, which are things I care about quite a lot. Um, oh, you reported it to your invigilator. Oh, I've been got. Luckily, it's got the marks in, right? Luckily, it's got marks in, so you know it's definitely part of the question because it's got to add up to 15. It's got to be there. He reported it to me in Vigilator. Uh, yeah. Was it during a uh, anti anonymous? Was it during a kind of tech disruption chaos thing? Like, I want to imagine it's like the eye of the storm TCS disruption, TCS disruption. Eye of the storm, you get back in and you say, as I'm missing I from one of those one of those question numbering parts. And then TCS disruption, TCS disruption. Uh, free school meals data, I believe we only get it for UK students. Um, what happens if people have got extra time in the maths? Uh, there are two reasons you might have got extra time. One, you might have been granted extra time to try and deal with disruption. If you had disruption, you are encouraged additional map blah 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 additional map. Um, if you have additional map for access reasons, then I, I hope you got it in the map as well. Whew. During a working bit, but after two disruptions, right? Yeah, okay. I think that, I think that is funny in a way. Uh, the ultra tree is really fun. Um, if you want to look these up, I believe they're called proofer codes uh, with a U. I think. <laughs> Embarrassing as I. How much do you prepare for these live streams? I don't even look up the spelling of the word proofer. Yep. Proofer. Ooh. 
Um, and they're kind of a thing. Um, if you already knew about proof of codes when you went into the test, then you probably know about a lot of other things as well. And there's probably no reasonable math question that you wouldn't be able to do. You didn't really do question three, did I, there? Um, no, so the second mat is just for people with technical TCS disruption. Um, for other people who, other people who, um, for whatever reason, can register for the mat, couldn't do the mat, um, like every year, there are some people who couldn't register for the mat, couldn't do the mat, or who uh, there's some, something else going on that means their mat score is not representative. There's a sort of normal process for this where colleges uh, get some uh, severity rating uh, and colleges can make a a shortlisting decision based on the available evidence. Um, that normal process is uh, still a thing. Um, uh, it's not broadly that straightforward for a free school meals. That would be that's a that was a, that's a very crude tag. I realise you have to fit it into quite a small text box, um, but uh, the thing you're proposing there is a kind of um, contextualized offer almost, or a kind of um, uh, mechanistic adjustment, I suppose. And I'll get flamed for this again, but it's it's never simple. Uh, yeah, people worrying about the timers, but you also say it froze, which means disruption, blah, 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 additional map. Uh, yeah, so you see now, now someone's asked about affirmative action, right? Because the previous question was so strong a suggestion that it sounded like affirmative action. Uh, young carers, oh gosh, uh, I think we get, oh, how does the care flag work? I can't remember if we get this, or oh, you declare it on UCAS? Is there a question on UCAS? I can't remember how the data set works. I think there's a question on UCAS, but maybe the question on UCAS just says, are you care experienced? Might have been expanded a few years ago to ask about being a carer. Can't remember. Can't remember if we get that data. Um, it, Miles thinks it's declared on UCAS. Um, if it's declared on UCAS, then I think it's on, on us to import it into our internal databases and consider it on the way. Herb also thinks it's declared on UCAS. Oh, grrr. Someone's reporting a special consideration. Uh, here it is. Uh, they didn't include that in your special consideration tools. So that's quite annoying. Um, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, sorry about you. Sorry, sorry to hear about your experience. Okay, people in people in chat are telling me that UCAS does declare things about um, being a young carer. Um, or I suppose not everyone doing UCAS is necessarily young. But fine, maybe ask about being a young carer. Um, in which case. Also get that. Blast you stuff. Uh, someone says, why is my screen bright? And the scary answer is probably because of tech disruption. Um, I've learned a lot about this recently. Um, it's possible that my internet is breaking. Oh, I would take that. If we have disruption, don't do extra maths because we think we did all right in maths. I don't think that's a frown on. Oh, why isn't that on screen? Oh, no, there it is. I don't think this is a frown on. I mean, if you think your map's done all right, if you think you've done all right on map, then in some sense we can just look at your map score, right? Shortlist as normal. Uh, modulo will have the information that there was disruption. Nothing's normal. I just want a normal year. Ah, someone just looked on UCAS. Look at this actual fact checking from Anonymous in chat. Uh, Alex, yes, look at the histograms from previous years. Um, if you look at the feedback, um, chart, there's a, there's a histogram which shows that there are people in that range. Oh, can I print this out? I had a nightmare the other day of the colourful loading dots from that. Absolutely terrifying. Gee, yeah, I can only imagine. Um, the... Uh, are we doing story time? No, you don't want to hear my story time. Um, I... Always, during the mat, I always sit by the phone, terrified that something's going to go wrong. It's my sixth mat, and this year something did go really wrong, and it was absolutely horrible for me as well. Horrible for you. Tell you what, 
if you've got looking at a screen that's loading is pretty bad having 1500 people try to phone you at the same time to tell you that the screen's loading pretty bad I don't know, it's not a story, that's just a moaning, isn't it? Can I do a story about a question? Um, during the setting process for question four, I thought about this in terms of uh, walking along a walking along a parabola. Um, so you're walking along a parabola, like some sort of valley. This is you. You've got a big smile. Capture the smile. And a nice hat. Cool, right, this is you. Um, and you're a bit worried because your hat is very nice and your plan is to walk down the hill and then up the other side um, and you really don't want to bang your head on the other end of the parabola which in this picture looks absolutely fine but if the parabola is a bit steeper like this and you're the same height then uh oh maybe you've got a sad face now because maybe as you walk down the parabola is so steep that you'll bang your head up here before you've got down to the end of the uh, before you've got down to the bottom of the valley um, before it's time to go to the other side so there's some relationship between the steepness of the parabola versus the um, height that you are including your hat um, and that relationship tells you something about whether you can walk down one side of the valley and up the other side or whether you're going to squash your nice hat um, uh, of course, on, on the way through, you walk perpendicular to the to the valley at all times, which is probably harder harder to do than it is to say. Anyway, that's what's going on in this question. Uh, the question rather boringly uh, replaces everything with uh, geometry things like tangents and normals and lines of length L, but, you know, it's a person wearing a hat in my head. Uh, hey, Purple Heart, like on Twitch. Uh, oh, bless you, anonymous person. Relaxing and zen, we'll get there. Ah, anonymous. I'm, I'm, I'm worried though that my life was, my life was quite good before. <laughs> I, I worry that it's now thirty years of this <laughs> to balance it out, like you say. Um, yeah, I, I'm worried that things balance out, maybe, <laughs> maybe to an average that I don't like. Um, I feel maybe, maybe I've been getting away with happiness. No, that's sad. When you hear from Warwick. I don't know what the Warwick dates are. I don't really know how they do it. They get the scores at the end of November, so roughly roughly speaking. Same time everyone gets them. So they could do it after then, I suppose, once they know your math scores. Do I think more people will be shortlisted? Yes. I think more people will be shortlisted this year. Um, generally, when there's um, when there's a crisis or when tutors are sort of sympathetic, uh, we tend to in end up interviewing more people. Um, I can't make any promises because as the department, we don't interview anyone. So if I up that by 20%, I'm still not interviewing anyone. So it's sort of empty promise, right? Um, the colleges interview people. Mass calls sent to Imperial, same time as Warwick. Sorry, yeah, I've got to say everything three times, right? Mass calls are sent to Imperial, the same time as Warwick, and Mass calls are sent to Oxford from Oxford at the same time as that. Uh, bar graphs come at the end. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting away. I just thought of, I overthought it, minus. I overthought the average thing. Anyway, the algebra for this question is not very fun to do. It's a kind of classic math question where there's a reasonably good idea, maybe, about walking along a valley, if you want to think about it like that, but then actual just painful algebra. Uh, there's a step here where you find the maximum of f of t, yeah, minimum of f of t. I don't know. Uh, what's t? Oh, t's a squared. Is that good? Uh, sort of semi okay, isn't it? What do you get your math scores? Oxford sends uh, Oxford applicants an automatic email with their math score at the end of the round in January. Imperial and, o Imperial and Warwick send, uh, or will send you a math score as part of their normal admissions feedback at the end of their admissions round in or roughly March, I think. Uh, Interviews early, late December. The additional matter is mid-November, yes. Interviews are early to late, uh, yes. How will that work? Yes. Uh, our tutors are going to be working super quickly. The additional test is multiple choice, um, which means it's easier to do the turnaround. It's quicker to do the turnaround. And yes, tutors do work really hard um, during that during that kind of two weeks. It takes time to mark the normal math anyway. So there's there's usually this period of about uh, a week or two weeks where people are um, 
making shortlisting decisions, reading all the applications, uh, making decisions about who to interview, and then doing the interviews. Um, so there's kind of this mad, slightly longer than two week period where suddenly hundreds of people are involved in admissions. Uh, you unfortunately can't have a scan of your map paper. Um, uh, the rule for exams is usually that you're entitled to things written on your exam paper, but electronically that's that's nothing, I'm afraid. Um, so you, yeah, you can't get your you can't get your answers back. Sorry. Uh, you want to interview? Just have a chat with me. Uh, hmm. I think I'm interviewing this year. Have I already told you that? I'm probably interviewing. I usually end up interviewing a bit. It doesn't feel right not to interview, right? If I'm getting hundreds of my colleagues to, or if hundreds of colleagues have to have to do, um, do things involving hundreds of people, right? Hundreds of applications, hundreds of people, hundreds of discussions, hundreds of decisions. It's all very large. Um, but that's the that's the sort of real massive team effort part that is kind of a bit more fun from my point of view. Right, good, okay. Why is Microsoft Paint telling me product alert? What, what, why? Why is it like this? I just, the other thing that makes me feel old is when features start appearing in Microsoft Paint. The whole point of Microsoft Paint is that it doesn't have any features. Uh, why is this edit with Paint 3D? Product alert. Microsoft, what are you doing? What are you doing? Anyway, uh, I'm looking at three again. Why am I looking at three? Uh, big up Warwick in chat. Um, some of my friends work at Warwick. I think I'm about to ask them whether Pi is better than E or not. Um, these are people who went to uni with me and then are now lecturers at Warwick. I think I'm meeting them at the weekend. We'll find out. Uh, international offers, I don't know. For Imperial and Warwick, it's probably best to ask Imperial or Warwick what's going on with your offer. Have we done everything else? You know, not having a question seven makes it easier to talk about everything. Oh, I didn't look like E. Good, I think we're running out of time as well, because it's about to be 7 o'clock. Uh, looks like the 23 paper. More or less. Dot the I's, cross the T. You want a 10 minute video on the additional map? Oh, that'd be easy, it's only got 10 questions. Um, don't, don't do this, try to mark yourself. Um, cut-off is going to be 55 this year. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a cut-off. Uh, come on, you know this, you've been around. Uh, I don't have a cut-off. And we always aim for the average to be about 50, but who knows. What was the hardest part, question or part of that? Hmm. Based on my opinions, so not, not looking at marks, but based on my opinions and discussion in chat, I think, hmm, what do I think? Reasonable, 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 hard. I think this is hard. Uh, quadratics, deceptively hard. This page, GH, uh, I sort of fly in. J, I just, I, maybe I just like the geometric series too much, but I think that's fine. Um, v, where I've circled it lots, super hard. Um, question three, I think is mostly fine. Uh, six marker at the start of four. I think this is hard. Um, five, I think the argument in the middle. Uh, part six, oh, that is a really hard part, um, and uh, getting the idea of question six, lots of people in chat seem to like it, but I think having the idea that it, the idea of like how the process works to reconstruct the whole tree, do we make you describe it? Oh yeah, briefly describe it up here, I think, I think, um, I think that's tough, I mean there's only a couple of marks and it says briefly describe. Oh, cut off for Warwick! Sorry, Herb, I'm correcting you on Warwick policy. I should never do that. Um, what does free school meals mean for shortlisting in the last few minutes? Um, Oxford tries to identify, so I've got a couple of minutes. Um, Oxford tries to identify uh, candidates who uh, meet certain socioeconomic. Oh, this is just such a buzz. Oh, okay, let's take, take out all the jargon. Take out all the jargon. Um, Oxford's got a commitment. The University of Oxford has a commitment, not as strong as affirmative action, but Oxford has a commitment that over quite a long time, Oxford should gradually, or not, or whatever, start again. 
That's unlucky. That's unlucky. As part of a government initiative, every university has to have an access and participation plan. Um, but almost every university has to have one of these plans that says what they're doing about access, um, access to higher education, um, to make sure that Oxford isn't just for some like, subset of the United Kingdom or whatever, um, to make sure that Oxford's kind of for the nerds, and there's nerds everywhere, um, all sorts of walks of life. Um, and historically, Oxford's done a pretty bad job of actually representing the United Kingdom. Um, so Oxford was required by the government to make a plan of what our targets would be or what our aspirations would be for how, on certain specific metrics, we'd do a better job of representing the United Kingdom. Now, several things in the way of that that you could moan about or argue about A-level take-up or whatever, but Oxford's actually got to do some stuff. And part of that is getting data on applicants and treating applicants very carefully uh, to look at the context of their educational achievements, for example. Not everything, not be all end all, but um, for example, uh, tutors are asked to consider the context around somebody's GCSE scores. Um, now, for maths, this is a little bit funny because GCSE scores are not a very good predictor for maths ability in particular because GCSEs are on so many things about how well you do in exams generally rather than just raw mathematical talent if that's even a thing um, but GCSEs vary quite a lot from school to school of course no control because you don't have any any single candidate doing GCSEs in lots of schools but um, you could say that some of that variation is perhaps due to um, a kind of cohort effect in the school and it might be interesting to try and identify who's uh, GCSE results are actually very strong for the school. Now, there's loads of stats work that's gone into this and lots of other things going into it that results in this metric called contextualized GCSE. And we did some stats, and it's very slightly correlated with performance on course for the Oxford Maths degree. Um, so we do look at that as well. And there's so many other of these like small things of looking at the kind of context around someone's application, which we have to consider because we're trying to do better to represent the United Kingdom. But they don't exclude people, in a way. Um, I think people often read it as, if, I'm, if I don't tick some boxes, then Oxford's not interested. Because people are used to Oxford, maybe... Two minutes, two minutes. People are maybe expecting Oxford to have some sort of prejudice, and the... The game is, I, I suppose, to try and guess what sort of prejudice Oxford has got. And maybe people's historical view, maybe still view, is that Oxford is prejudiced in one particular way. And then maybe you hear about free school meals and you think, ah, I see, Oxford's actually prejudiced in the other sort of way. Um, and in a very polarised world, politically and basically everything seems very polarised at the moment. I can kind of understand where that comes from. Fine balancing act, perhaps. But... I think at the end, I just want the people who are going to be good at doing maths on the course. Once they get here, they get the same teaching, they get the same tutorial support, they do the same same maths. Um, so it does make sense to take the people who, whatever's been going on before, are going to thrive at Oxford. Um, good, right, okay. Is that full diplomat mode? That's like five years training. We'll do that. Someone in chat just says, I love you. <laughs> affirmative action would be if you said, um, so my take is affirmative action is much stronger. It says um, we should take some people who are not good at maths and won't thrive on the course. And because of certain characteristics about them, we should take them anyway. And that, that's not what's going on. Um, I don't think, uh, so on sexuality and gender identity, and actually race and ethnicity as well, um, do not get passed to um, decision makers in Oxford. I'm being careful there because I, I'm certain that we don't get race and ethnicity data through. Gender and, oh sorry, gender, hang on. No, gender does get passed through. Let me start again. Gender, I, I, I can do this. <laughs> Five years in the job. Can James remember what gender identity means? It's not PR training, it's just... Nav, come on. 
Okay. Please try to summarise this year's words in Matt in four words. That's a great game, which is almost worth missing my train for. Uh, whoa, is it going to be polynomial? There's a lot of polynomials. Um, everyone likes the octatree. Can I have octatree as one of my words? If I have to, if I have to remember, 10 years time, people say, which one was Matt 23? I say, why are you talking to me about it? I am in the fun phase of my life where I just live on an island or something. Uh, but yes, I do remember Matt 23, actually. It was the one with polynomials, octatree, Oh, it's memorable, memorable. Biggest triangle. It's polynomials, octatree, biggest triangle. Polynomials, octatrees, uh, biggest triangle. Good. I put, I don't know on a lot of, I put, uh, prefer not to say on a lot of things as well. Uh, but sometimes that's just me being contrary um, often I think people are not collecting data for any uh, mumble, mumble, mumble. complete chaos oh yeah the tech one I should should mention the tech disruption tech disruption tech tech disruption brilliant stuff no I don't remember that one 10 years from now 10 years from now that We've got some fans of prefer not to say in chat. Good. Uh, quality monitoring stuff doesn't get passed down as full as times. So race and ethnicity definitely works like that. Um, I'm trying to be careful because you guys keep changing how the data works. They've recently changed, precisely the gender identity question changed this year on UCAS. I think you've answered a different gender identity question to last year's, co uh, last year's cohort. Um, so I'm trying to be up to date on how these questions actually get posted in the UCAS so that I'm relevant to your experience live right now. We're live on the internet. Let's try and live it. Um, rather than me mumbling about what it was like before. I have missed my train. I always miss my train. It's fine. I get the next train. There's so many trains. Oh, she's the best question. I think non trees in the next map. Yep. This is it every year now. We just add a node. Add a node. Uh, Let's just quickly draft map 2024. Uh, what are we going to do? Stanley says I've got to do non trees. Hang on, let's just follow through. Uh, nine. Uh, uh, single digit top. Those are fine. Good, 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 good. Uh, these need a nine in them. Uh, good. Um, the code for a non tree is as follows. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I've got to redo. I've got to redo the example, but you know, that'll be fine. Um, and it'll be a bit longer. But yeah, okay. Find the octophone code, brilliant. Draw this, we'll switch this to some nines for, for the giggles. Uh, draw the nona tree that has this, put the nine on the end. What that leaves, oh, this is great. Stanley, you're a genius. This is a brilliant question. Uh, and finally, oh, we're gonna have to change these numbers as well. Oh yeah, it's one way you need. You're gonna need the fact that two to the, I guess it's now about nine to the nine or something. Last, this year it was like eight to the, Okay. No. I'm gonna have to think eight digits from one to nine constructs a non entry. Yeah, this is brilliant. Yeah, no, I'm full confidence in Stanley's question. And then so that I don't make the II mistake, I'll just delete the last part. Good good job, Stanley. I like your comment. Uh gender is in personal details, not equality. Oh good thing. Um also math is more like more like twenty-five to thirty percent. If there's responding something not on the screen, there it is. More like 25 to 30. Uh, I always get a train. People are reminding me to do the train. Oh, J.E. is back. When I started streaming in 2020, people were always talking about J.E. Do you go any more again with a giraffe? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, the quotes have to have eight digits now. Yes. We're, good. we're, we're learning about non Um oh, Disabilities. What gets on that? Yes. That's definitely that definitely gets passed down because it's really relevant if we're trying to schedule if we're trying to schedule interviews and um, we might need to uh, take things into consideration. I don't live in Oxford. I live near Oxford. Uh, for some of that, do I get a guaranteed offer? I think it's a bit late now, isn't it? But to put it in your personal statement, I've invented non trees. They were featured on the official Oxford Matt live stream. 
Uh, yeah, Oscar, I just changed the numbers, right? Okay, four next year. Whoa, crazy. Everything's much harder now because this question needed more algebra. What a terrible idea. Um, next four. Fibonacci numbers? Oh, I'm sure we can do that on the Fibonacci number question. Yeah, this is brilliant. We'll just rerun it next year. No one will notice because tech disruption this year means that no one got to see the questions. We'll say, look, no one's got questions. We'll just run the test back next year. Brilliant stuff. Okay, I'm joking. I know it's sometimes hard to tell that I'm joking. People are now trying to guess where I live that's near Oxford, which is a bit scary. Um, equation of the line you posted on Instagram. Ah, oh, yeah, what did I do? Oh, that's this question. It, was it the wiggly line that was this one? I put this in Desmos, and I put I put this thing, and I put the line x equals four in Desmos. I think for the for the square. That's what says happy birthday, and they're going to say that every day until I acknowledge it, thus revealing my top secret birthday. Am I moderating? Yeah, doing maths and chatting. Yeah, I have a chat moderator until seven o'clock, but then after that, it's just you know, you know, back in the early days. Early days of the pandemic, 2020, when we started doing this, um, it's just you just learn to do everything all at once. Of course, back then there were only about ten people, so it's a bit easier. Whereas now there are, looks at numbers. Wait, hang on, ten people. Oh no, forty people or something. Why were octatrees on the press releases instead of the hat person for Avila? Well, I already had this, right? You gotta put something in the picture. You always you gotta put something pretty in, and it's always it's always the computer science question that's the prettiest. You put this in, you get further questions about who's that chap and why they're so happy. Um, uh, would you like a story about my birthday? Uh, yes, you would. Um, the other day, um, my students celebrated my birthday. Um, they thought it was my birthday. Maybe it was my birthday. Maybe it wasn't. My birthday's top secret. Um, good. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Maths club is coming back. And we're going to do maths club. There are more people now, but I sort of think there are people now just in case I say something about Matt. I worry this about the Twitch stream as well. Ah, uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The other terrifying thing about teaching students in Oxford these days is that they've seen the live stream. They've seen the live stream and they remember things. I was sort of hoping they'd forget things. It's quite hard to um it's quite hard to it's quite hard to um it's quite hard to maintain um kind of professional like yes and learn about differential equations when you were also the guy who did a mat in ten minutes video and True hat personal prevalent. You'll understand this in like a uh, year and a bit when teaching you. Uh, it's top secret because someone asked earlier. Also, as part of a prank earlier this week. Anyway, never mind. Uh, yeah, people have come up to me and told me that one plus one is two. That is, um, sorry, there it is. People have come up to me and told me that one plus one is two. Which is a helpful fact, worth remembering. You never know when it's going to come up. You want the third Fibonacci number? I've got a thing for you. Uh, <laughs> oh, great. Okay, love you, chat. Right, good stuff. Um, uh, Herb wants to know about doing the wrong questions on the wrong section. Oh, this is fine. Um, the markers are instructed to look for your working out, and more than that, they want to find your marking out. The most important thing that I tell the markers at the start is... Now, these are people who are grad students. They've recently done big university exams. So I tell them to imagine the people marking their exams and how they were, how, remember how they came out of exams and thought, oh gosh, I hope I get a nice person marking that because I did something slightly weird. Um, and I always tell the map markers at the start that they need to be that marker. Um, so it's quite nice, really, because we've got grad students doing the marking. And they're not the same people who do the actual admissions decisions, they're kind of tutors um, who make the admissions decisions, which means it's almost it's almost separate entirely in a way that the people marking are mostly I remember there's a tiny bit of overlap. There's a tiny bit of overlap. Anyway, never mind. Um let's stick to the thing. People marking really want to give people marks. 
which is the right way around. It's what you want from your markers, that they want to give people marks. Do I get recognized in public? Yes. Someone stopped me on the street. They said, are you James Monroe? And you can't say no to that. It's nice marking up for some Yeah, yeah. When I say map markers, I mean people marking map. Yes. For the last part of question three, can you use intuition? <laughs> I can't remember how we're marking this. Intuition. Gee. You have intuition about this function? This function? With the eight and the three and the fifth, 150? Your intuition is much stronger than mine. You're only on four to the power of eight. Because you can make that a four. And you hope that that's a one. Uh, oh, you make both terms large. I think you mean more than intuition. Yeah, okay, so does the average interview cutoff change from year, much from year to year? Um, yeah, so I published, I published this number called mu2. Um, mu2 is the average of people we've shortlisted. So there's no cutoff, but you can still work out an average. Obviously, the average is not the minimum. It's funny I have to keep saying this, but you, anyway, never mind. Um, the average score changes quite a lot year on year. Oh, this is minus 10. You see, I think this is just clever, right? Cause 180, cause 180. Yeah. I mean, the question is just let's find the maximum, so I'd hope you get some marks. Uh, is there a voice someone each year who gets zero max? No, not always. Uh, yeah, not always. Is there always someone who gets 100? Not always. Um, how come you're just wearing a hoodie today? Surely too casual for the world's number one uni. Firstly, it's not a hoodie, it's, it's a. Uh, it's a very smart jumper, actually. Um, uh, and secondly, it's not actually as smart as you might expect around here. Uh, you did not get zero this year, XOXO. James, you could do your live streams on YouTube. I am. Oh, you mean the other ones? I'll do a Patreon. Patreon feels wrong somehow. I don't know, for, for this kind of thing. Don't know. It just feels wrong to have a have a job at the university and also try to monetize that separately. I don't know. It just feels weird, man. Um, I should say that I'm an, on Twitch, but any money that we raise from Twitch goes to charity. Who's my favorite mathematician? Uh, at the moment, I'm going to pick. Uh, oh, I think I'm going to pick Sophie Germain. Yeah, I'm going to pick Sophie Germain. Uh, exactly zero does take skill, especially on the multiple choice, actually. Um, good, right. Question three sucks, completing the square. No, there were little kids screaming. Miles, how many special considerations? Uh, what's this? Oh, somebody's helping. Somebody's helping. Yes. Scroll down to find mean score. Mu1, Mu2, Mu3. Uh, yeah, Twitch has Twitch got some benefits, says Miles on screen now. Um, there's, it's got less um, latency and... Uh, it does it's slightly easier to do. It's got more features on the on my side. I mean, it's sort of stupid to say there's like loads of people on that side of the screen. There's only one person on this side of the screen. It's slightly nicer for me. Um, uh, oh, you're the guy. Don't tell everyone. Oh, why would you tell everyone? Now everyone's going to... Oh, don't tell everyone. <laughs> I looked at, uh, they asked very nicely, I looked at two people's personal statements. I don't think the advice I gave them was very helpful at all. I do not want to do this for everyone else's personal statements. Um, now everyone's going to think that you've got special, like, personal statement pointers. What have you done? Um, Twitch chat's a little bit different from YouTube chat. Uh... Yeah, no, you don't. I, I, in general, I don't want to look at people's personal statements. I already get access to. If I want personal statements, I get thousands of personal statements. Oh man, man! <laughs> Gonna have to edit that out of the video. I just need to be less nice, right? I need to I need to put my foot down more. 
this new less nice James. When we get, when we run long, by the way, we run uh, we tend to run quite long because uh, time is continuous, but train times are discrete. Uh, have I now forgotten this? Oh blimey! I've person's in chat. Let's be let's be nice. Oh no, new not nice, James. I forgot their personal statement before I'd finished looking at it. Um, yeah, no, no. I don't know who they are. I don't make any of the decisions. Oxford doesn't really use personal statements in the way you might want us to. So lots of people want us to look at the personal statement and say this is the best written thing I've ever seen. Give this person a place immediately. Um, it doesn't really work like that. Uh, I think my main bit, of the, most thing I remember from the advice was switching two paragraphs so it made more sense. But gee, it was like I, I haven't had to write anything for ages. Am I doing more videos for Number File? Uh, yes, please. If that's Brady in chat. Had a good time. <laughs> now they're now they're arguing the toss with me. Oh my goodness! I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not sorry. I'm you, not nice, James. Um, uh, I we I think there's one in the pipeline. That this is awkward because I recorded a second one with them, and I don't know if they're going to use it. Um, so <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> oh goodness me. Thanks for asking, Miles. Um, personal statements have useful information in them. How does Oxford use personal statements? Sorry, I read them in the moderation panel before I, before they turn up on screen. There's a lag there. Um, they've often got important information in. Sometimes they give us important context. Um, and sometimes it is nice to know that people are actually interested in mathematics. Um, I think you'd have to write a personal statement really badly for it to be like a, a negative thing. But everybody's personal statement says they like maths. So that's good. Uh, is Dr. Tom Crawford involved in the missions? I believe so. I think he is uh, involved for one of the colleges, St. Edmund Hall, off the top of my head, I think. Um, can we prep for an interview? Yeah, so interviews have broadly the same sorts of battles at, uh, um, at Matt, but that's not really a good description because um, during an interview, um, tutors who are doing the interview um, might try to introduce new mathemat mathematics or teach you something new. Um, so quite often an interview might be about I know, something impossibly weird like Fourier transforms or sums of prime numbers or whatever and we don't expect you to turn up at the interview having the answers to the, the questions that we're going to ask. Um, interviews are much more about um, working on a problem and maybe learning something and maybe using the thing as you're learning it uh like how at university after a while everybody is learning new stuff constantly and um, we want to see what happens when you're learning new stuff and um, so it's kind of it's kind of fake news for me to say oh yeah it's just polynomials just quadratic equations because by that point that stuff's boring and you, you you've done the map by that point so we've seen that you can solve polynomials or whatever um just to talk about something else uh, I'm doing a live stream about uh, interview questions. If you want to see some interview questions that I've used or considered using in the past uh, on this channel in a few weeks' time. Uh, good. Uh, my school is asking students from at home. Is that allowed? Um, yep. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so um, we can't we can't force schools to do a thing. Um, we are offering it at home. If your school isn't hosting it, then you might have to do it at home. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, Response to the map disruption thought process, Josh. Oh, go on. Um, uh, first reaction during the day was that uh, everything was terrible. We had no idea what the extent was. Um, over time, it became clear that it was uh, re a region-based sort of thing, that a particular time zone of start time was affected. Um, so that it became quite clear that there were two really big groups we can argue about percentages, but two really big groups. People who had had a normal day and people who had had a terrible time. Um, and doing something that's fair for both of those groups, or at least some sort of compromise for both of those groups, has been really important the way through. Um, so uh, throwing away the map was not a good thing for all the people who had had a relatively normal day. We thought that throwing it away wouldn't um, honour that. Well, 
the map was kind of unusual in a way that it had um, a wide range of different things happening to different people. Um, we were first one up in the day uh, and we were on the first day. So in some sense, we were the first ones to hit a problem. Uh, and yeah, so that kind of range of stuff meant that we had to consider these kind of solutions where some people do, uh, some people are happy for us to use their map score and some people um, um, maybe get offered something else. And then there's been a lot of working out what the something else is and how you organize it and how you offer it and how you do eligibility and not a lot of sleep. Oh, no, I'm right. How do you pre how do you have to prep for it? Do you have to prep for interviews? No, um, and you already have. You don't have to because you already have. Um, if you're practicing doing extra bits of maths and you're doing school maths and you're learning A level or equivalent, or you already learnt it and you're keeping strong at it, um, then you're already doing sensible things. Um, it's not a trap, it's not a trick. Um, it's not like all oh, French questions or something and you should start learning French now. It's like maths. Um, they are a bit like tutorials. Is there a flag for free school meals? Uh, is it binary data? I think so. It used to be. Uh, you are now balding. Generally, your hair is falling out. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I think you should consider seeking medical attention, uh, but I'm not an expert. Um, or at least talking to someone about stress. Um, I've found that useful in the past. Uh, I don't have a printer. I think at home, People might be looking at the questions on a screen. Um, more details tomorrow. Why not reconduct it for all? Considered it, some people are uh, happy for us to use them at school. And if they didn't experience disruption, then in some sense, they, 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 they've done it. Ask them to do extra things. Uh, is there a religion one? I don't think we do a religion one. Um, they're waiting, there's, well, I'm, nobody's gonna, oh. The ultra solution is not going to be, oh yes, we can multiply your original one by 0 0.3 because of the disruption and multiply the other one by 0 0.7, that would be mad. 70% um, and five or lower. Nobody's got any scores on the additional test yet, so I don't think I'm gonna talk about what that is. Do I find Reddit stressful? I hate Reddit entirely. I've tried to switch off as much Reddit as I can. First live stream and it's ending now. Thanks for watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Thanks for being patient with me as well, chat. Um, it's been really tricky getting communications out and it's been really tricky trying to keep people updated about what Oxford's doing. Um, thanks for bearing with us. I, I thought you'd want to know that hundreds of people behind the scenes in Oxford are absolutely on your side and want the best for you. Um, I wish we could admit everyone. We don't have enough capacity to admit everyone. I think this every year. I see the applications and I wish we could admit everyone. Uh, so good news, Warwick and Imperial, if you're watching, I'm not just going to take all of them. Bye. See you next. Oh no, when, when, when am I seeing you? What am I doing? Oh yeah, bonus stream next week. All about match short questions. We're doing an extra one. It's sort of bonus bonus. We had a plan for bonus streams. Now there's an extra one. I don't know what that is. Bonus squared. There you go. Um, I can't do any more free school meals questions at the moment. Sorry. Okay. I really do have to go. Okay. Bye, chat. Uh, see you in 165 and a half hours for another episode of the Oxford Matt live stream. Take care. Have a good evening. Bye.